Good afternoon and welcome to this presentation of the Sports Fan Base Network. I'm Dave DePasqual alongside James Jackson. It is a beautiful 59 degrees sunny skies here at John A. Farrell Stadium on the campus of Westchester University. Both teams, are. it's going to be a peace act battle between the Kutztown Golden Bears and the Westchester Golden Rams. It's a golden rivalry here today, Dave. Both these teams coming in on a lot of momentum. Westchester coming in on a three-game winning streak. Kutztown coming in on a two-game winning streak on the back end of their blowout win against Millersville, shaping up to be a good game. Absolutely. Westchester had a good game themselves last week at Lockhaven. It was gridlock 9-9, but Westchester scored 24 unanswered because of the right arm of Pat Moriarty. Yeah, and uh, their, their sophomore quarterback really led them in that second half. First half looked kind of shaky, but he stepped it up in the second half, uh, came up big, ending with about 185 yards passing. So uh, Pat Moriarty really stepped up, looking to ride his coattails again in this game. They're going to rely on him today as he has tossed three touchdown passes in the last three consecutive games. Something to keep an eye on. Additionally, it's going to be a shootout. Both Kutztown and the Golden Rams put up points. Westchester averaging 38, while Kutztown's putting up 37. Well, Kutztown last game had 400 total yards. That's just on the ground. So we're, they're looking for these defenses. Someone's got to come up big and make a stop. These are two gunslinging teams, two very high-scoring teams who like to put the ball in the end zone. So something's got to give. For the Golden Rams, someone to keep an eye on. Last week, they had the special teams player of the week in Brandon Monk. They welcomed him back after an ankle sprain. He had a 96-yard touchdown return to earn him that honors. And then the redshirt freshman in Rouse had a very nice game, getting interception and getting honors. And I think the key for this little stretch that Westchester is having is that their defense and special teams are starting to step up. It's not just their offense doing the work, and that's what they need a more well-rounded game to beat these teams in the PSAC East, and they're starting to have that now. All right, you are, we're going to step aside. You are listening to this and watching this presentation of the Sports Fan Base Network. <laughs> You're watching the Sports Fan Base Network, presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Welcome you back to here at John A. Farrell Stadium. Westchester won the toss and will receive. So Moriarty will begin this game. Moriarty will begin this game Let's try to score points early and often as we head to the National Anthem. You are watching this presentation of the Sports Fan Base Network. Hi, I'm Tommy Green, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. When I was in high school, it was very important to me to show scouts what I could do. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you're a small to medium sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAY-EASY. Welcome you back to John A. Farrell Stadium after Westchester University's marching band, who I just recently found out is going to be playing the Thanksgiving Day Parade, so great to see you. That's a huge honor for the Westchester marching band. Very well known and respected around in our area, but now starting to get a little more attention as they head to the Philadelphia uh, area for the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Well, something I just noticed, you're wearing your pink tie, and a lot of pe people are wearing pink shirts today. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, as you know, October is 
Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So it's pink out here today at John A. Farrell Stadium. As you can see, some players have some pink gear on. Coaches sta coaching staff has it. Referees have it. Even the fans and cheerleaders are getting involved with the pink T-shirt. So it's a great atmosphere today. Great day for some football. With Westchester receiving, what are a few keys to the game and another player to keep an eye on? Uh, I'm keeping my eye on, on Pat Moriarty today. He had a very strong second half last week against Lock Haven. I'm looking forward to him coming out, putting points on the board early and often, completing his passes, making good throws. I think a lot of today's game relies on Pat Moriarty. For the Golden Bears, I'm going to say a player to keep an eye on is number 37, Cody Reed. In this season, he has 32 receptions for 503 yards and six touchdowns. He's caught at least one touchdown every game. He's someone... Westchester secondary has to keep an eye on. And as you see, the Westchester secondary, Westchester defense as a whole is stepping up in these past few games, aiding them to these victories. But Kutztown's offense is stepping up, aiding them to their victories. That's a great matchup to keep our eye on as we get as we look forward to the opening kickoff. Back to kick this one away for the Golden Bears is number 91, Alec Rosenfeld. Back to return this one for the Golden Rams are Brandon Monk and Elder. This is going to be a high kick. It's going to be taken down at the six along. He's going to find a crease, and he's going to spin his way down to the 30-yard line. Good start for the Golden Rams early in this one. That was Elder with the, with the kick return. Good return by Elder. Staying in his lanes, going north and south, getting upfield, getting a good field position for the Golden Rams starting at their 30-yard line. Starting today for the Golden Rams, they are led by their sophomore quarterback, Pat Moriarty. Running back, Sprain and Monk and Jarrell Elder. On the outside, Eddie Elliott, Shannon Mayer, and tight end Tim Brown. Moriarty is going to throw it to the outside. It's going to be complete to Eddie Elliott, but he's going to be stopped by two Golden Bear defenders. Good passing down, or good passing play here on first down. Gets about three or four yards to open up, get more yards started, get him in some rhythm here. Up front for the Golden Rams is their left tackle, Doug Gilbert. Left guard, Vince Lestraco. Center, Devin LeBeau. Right guard, Tyler Drob. And right tackle, Michael Unger. Moriarty, five wide receiver set. He's going to throw into the flat. It's going to be caught, and he's going to be down near the first down marker. It's a good job by number 94 to come down with that tackle for the Golden Bears. That's McDonald. It's a good job by Moriarty here. Not playing and taking a gamble early in, the, early in the game. Checking down throws, getting a rhythm established, starting to move the chains here for the Golden Rams. Third and short. Third down and one. Moriarty will go under center. I formation. It's going to be a, a broken play. Moriarty is going to try and dive off the right side of the line, but he is going to be short. Looks like some miscommunication up there up front by the Golden Rams. It looked like Moriarty wanted to send somebody in motion. No one went in motion. That seemed to throw up the whole rhythm of the play. Moriarty tried to keep it and make something happen, but they can't. Now it's fourth down. Westchester goes three and out on the first possession. Something Coach Wong cannot be happy with. Third down and short, broken play. Luckily, it wasn't a fumble. Out comes the punting unit led by their kicker. That is Brandon Paulson, the red shirt freshman, who's doing a good job early in this season. Back to return this for the Golden Bears is Craig Reynolds. It's going to be a punt. It's going to take a Westchester bounce. It's going to roll all the way down to about the 12-yard line. Good punt, and it will back up Kutztown. And here comes Westchester's defense out here for the first position. Let's see if they can pick up this offense as they are stalled on their first drive. Kutztown is led by their redshirt senior quarterback, Chad Barden. His running, finding his running lanes is Terry Williams, led by up front Tyler Redding. Guys up front, left tackle Jordan Morgan, Mike Italiani, Ben Kreger, Brian Robbins and Skyler Panchari. Wide receivers are Kellen Williams, Cody Reed, and Anthony Kelly. It's going to be a handoff to Williams. He's going to go up the gut, but he's going to be stacked up. 
Good first stand here by Westchester's front seven, not letting the running lanes get established. Stops them for about a three yard gain there on first down. For the Golden Rams defensively, up front they have George Ship, Barry Lyons, Josh Ganzelli, and Andrew Cohen. Linebackers, Ralph Reeves, Kevin Dugan, and Brandon Pepper. In the secondary, they're led by Ted Patton, Drew Formica, Kevin Malone, and Blaze Shiler. As the play is going to go up the gut, and he's going to be stacked up. Westchester's doing a good job penetration. And that's a great read by Westchester's linebackers. Everybody stayed home on that play. That was a triple option there by the Golden Bears coming out, trying to run some trickery through Westchester. Westchester didn't bite. Very good job there on defense. So I'm going to keep on Westchester's defense has great play at all levels. Last week they were led by redshirt freshman Niger Rouse with seven stops and an INT. As you said earlier, three interceptions. And this Westchester defense also came up with three sacks. That's key today for, for the Golden Rams. Cannot let this quarterback have time to throw. We need pressure. Barden comes out. Five wide receiver set. He's going to take the snap. Westchester's applying pressure, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield. The Golden Bears are going backwards. Okay, right on cue there, Dave. I said they needed to apply pressure early in this game. That's a great first possession here by Westchester. I said they need to pick up their offense. They do exactly that. It's going to be a fourth down and 16. It's going to back them up with 11 minutes to go early in this one. Back to punt it away is Andrew Douche, the senior. And it's a high kick. It's going to be returned from the 47, Brandon Monk, but he's only going to find a little wiggle room on the outside. Mm. And that's all we need. Just get positive yards. When you field a punt around the midfield, last thing you want to do is go backwards. Way, way to field the punt by Monk. Get up, get what you can. But it is a game of field position, and Westchester is in Kutztown territory to begin this one. And we see this, you know, over the course of the games that Westchester played. They usually do start with good field position. Pat Moriarty usually gets the ball beyond his own 30-yard line, which is key. So now he needs to put some points on the board here. Moriarty in the pistol. He's going to fake the ha handoff. He's going to throw to his tight end, Tim Brown, but he's going to be tricked up behind the line of scrimmage. That's good play there by, by Kutztown's defense. Uh, not not recognizing, a, recognizing a play, coming up for the stop early in the backfield. For the Golden Bears defense, number 96, Ronnie Tomasetti. They have Tyrone Brown and Eric Crownin, and number 94, who was already called, Zamir McDonald. Linebackers leading the way is Zach Delp, Niger Jefferson, and Kurt Kenny is the rover. In the secondary, they have Lance Dean, Kenny Williams, Jake Perry, and Mintz. As play is going to go up to go, but Westchester's only finding some running room. And not finding much running room here. Uh, early in his position. Who I'm looking at on Kutztown's defense is that big linebacker, outside linebacker, number 94, uh, Zamir McDonald. He really leads this uh, Golden Bears a pass rush and run stoppage. He's big on the outside. As you can see, he forced that running lane to go inside and there was nowhere to go. Westchester's got to make sure that he's not impactful on their defensive end. In the pistol formation for Moriarty, he's looking over the middle. He has a reception in Tim Brown, who's still on his feet. He's going to be tripped up in the red zone. He's going to be on the 18-yard line. Great pass and great reception. I think it's about time that our All-American tight end starts looking like an All-American tight end. That was an All-American type play right there. Great pass over the middle by Moriarty. Way to stand tough by Tim Brown and catch it over the middle in some traffic. Break a, a couple tackles and get inside the red zone. This is what we're looking for for Westchester. Moriarty goes no huddle. Three wide receivers set. Monk is going to be a play action, and he is going to be hit in the backfield. What a great play by the Bears. That's number two shooting all the way up, and that was a phenomenal play. That's the second time we've called his name. He just shoots up from that sh safety position all the way, and that's the second time he's got a tackle in the backfield for a loss. That's going to be a nine-yard loss for the Golden Rams. Pistol formation, three wide receiver set. And the team's going to look aside. But someone came up, you were talking about McDonald. He has six tackles for loss. He is a big player up front for the Golden Bears. He's just a force on that defensive line. So Westchester's has got to make sure that he's not the reason that they lose this game. Dempsey goes in motion. There's a flag on the play. Moriarty just throws it away as he was out of the pocket, incomplete. But they already have a flag on the play in the area of legal motion. Mm -hmm. 
Moriarty's already had pressure up in his face a lot today. Westchester's got to make sure this Golden Bear defensive line does not get up in Moriarty's face so he has time to make accurate throws. Our head referee is Nate Williams today. And it's going to be a legal motion on the Golden Rams. The penalty will be declined, so we'll bring up third down and long. Well, this is what we have to look at, look out for for Westchester. They do struggle with penalties early and often in games, and it hurts them. They get a big mm -hmm. play to their tight end that sets them up in, inside the red zone. Then they get a nine-yard loss and a penalty on top of that. That's two momentum killers right off the bat. Westchester can't afford too many of those. Westchester comes out, four wide receiver set. It looked like McDonald jumped on the play, but they decided not to take advantage of it. Mm, Moriarty did see it, saw something he didn't like, changed the play at the line. Moriarty's looking, he's going to sidestep a defender. He's going to throw it, and it's going to be complete. Caught by number 11 of the Golden Rams, that's Mayer, but there is a flag back in the area of holding. Hey, that was a great job by Moriarty keeping the play alive. Side steps the defender, steps up in the pocket in the face of adversity, makes a good throw, but we'll see what the flag's for. It is going to be holding on the Golden Rams as when Moriarty decided to try and get out of the pocket, a defender was held as he was able to throw that ball clean. And this is back-to-back -back penalties that Stymie's drives for Westchester, making it a third and incredibly long third and 29 now uh, for Westchester Golden Rams. It's not what they look forward to. They fielded the punt at their 50, and now they're backed up to their own 36. Not only does it back them up, it knocks them out of field goal range. It's Paulson's long on this season is 32, so you're going to at least try and make up some of the yards. This is things they can't afford to do. They cannot beat themselves. Moriarty throws it, and it's going to be dropped by Eddie Elliott as he was trying to look up the field. Right, you got to look that ball in before you catch it there. He was looking up the field, trying to make sure he could get into at least field goal range for his kicker, but drops the ball. Got to catch it first. Paulson will come out to punt this one away. Back to return for the Golden Bears is number 13, Craig Reynolds. The Westchester's just got to take advantage of the stuff that they get. They got field, good field position on both drives and weren't able to do anything with it. They cannot keep beating themselves like this. It is a clean snap. Paulson kicks this one. It's a high boot, but doesn't have much depth. It's going to take a Golden Ram bounce, and it's going to roll down to the 11-yard line. So it's going to net 26 yards. I, I, don't, I don't think initially that was the punt that he was looking for, but it takes a good Westchester bounce there. So they get some luck. Let's see if the defense can come out and do exactly what they did on that first possession. Good run stoppage, good pressure on the quarterback. For the Golden Bears, look for their number one wide receiver, Cody Reed. But they have a pair in Reed and Williams who can go the distance on any play. As Barton comes out, shotgun formation, three wide receiver set. It's going to be a handoff to, to Williams, but he's only going to pick up a gain of three. And like you said earlier, Dave, this cuts down offense is a very high-powered offense and a very good passing attack. That's something that Westchester can let, not let them beat here in this game. Excuse me, that was Darrell Scott, number 23, on the carry. So they have a pair of running backs that cuts down will utilize today. Shotgun formation, two wide receiver set for Barton. He's going to put a wide receiver in motion. It's going to fake the jet sweep and go up the gut. But he's going to be ran into a group of Westchester defenders, mainly Ship and Cohen. This is a very good job. Back-to-back -back possessions for Westchester's defense, not letting anything happen up the middle of their defense. They got to be careful, though. Linebackers can't get too greedy and come up because the balls go right over their head. And as we, as we already know, Kutztown's passing attack is very dangerous. Critical third down here. Third down and four, just under seven minutes remaining in this first quarter. Five wide receivers set for the redshirt senior. Westchester showing pressure with Ralph Reeves. He's going to come to the outside. It's going to be thrown in that direction. And Westchester three and out. Great job as they pick up where they left off last week, only allowing 38 yards in the second half. Back-to-back -back very good possessions for Westchester's defense. 
But Westchester's defense is stepping up big. Their offense needs to help them out by putting some points on the board. Whether it's seven or three, they need to reward this defense for having back-to-back -back three and outs against Kutztown's offense. Dutch back to kick this one away. Back to receive it is the special teamer, Brandon Monk. Westchester applies the pressure. He's going to call a fair catch, and the ball's going to be spotted on the 41. But there is a flag in the area of the punter. Yeah. So even if it is a five-yard penalty, will give the Golden Bears a first down. And that's definitely running into the kicker. Nearly got the block punt, but landed directly on the punter. That's going to be running into the punter every time. They're going to call the personal foul. That's going to give Kutztown new life. So Westchester's defense will come back on the field. He's done a great job with two three and outs today. It does, it's done a great job, but penalties, penalties, penalties. Mm -hmm. We've already had three in this first corner, and we're only halfway through. Westchester is averaging 13 penalties per game. Coach Swan cannot be happy, especially with his offense not getting the, the ball back in good field position. That's something that can't happen. And defense is stepping up big. The penalties have happened on either special teams or offense have yet to have one on the defense. Four wide receivers set for Barton. Westchester applying pressure. It's going to be a handoff once again. He's going to find a crease. Scott finds a crease, and he's going to get his way all the way down to the 39, so a seven-yard carry. This big running back goes right up the middle, lowers his head, and lowers the boom on defenders. Carried about three or four defenders. That's a nice seven-yard game for Kutztown on first down. Scott's been doing a good job. On the season, he had 47 carries for 274 and a TD. The main guy getting production last week was willing to three – a trio of touchdowns. Second down and three for Barton. Reeves applying pressure. It's going to be a play action. Barton's going to roll to the outside and flip it. Nearly intercepted by the Golden Rams. And it looked like Barton was originally looking for his first option on the real route on the sideline. Great coverage in the secondary by Westchester. But Barton wasn't able to find a receiver. It tries to flip it at the last second and doesn't. Doesn't it wasn't able to complete the pass. Good job by Westchester's defense. Drew for Michael was the closest guy almost coming up with that interception. Third down and three with 550 remaining in this first quarter. Barton comes out. Four wide receiver set. He's gonna be looking to his left. He's gonna throw down the field. Two tall for his intended target. And that will bring out the punt unit. So good job by the Golden Rams defense early on in this one. I've yet to allow a first down in, in this game, Dave. So Westchester's defense coming up big. I said they were going to be a key to this game, stopping this Bears offense that is so high-powered it can put points on the board so easily. Dutch is back to kick this one. Fourth down and three. Brandon Monk standing on the 20-yard line to get this one. It is a high end over end kick. Monk weighs her the fair catch, but a beautiful punt by the Golden Bears. Beautiful punt, beautiful hang time. Allow your special teams to get down there and make a play and not allow Monk to have a return on the play. It's a good punt, and Westchester's backed up inside their own 20. Westchester found some wiggle room, throwing the ball down the field to Tim Brown over the, over the middle of the field. But one thing I saw last week against Lockheed was a lot of crossing routes. Moriarty feels comfortable throwing and dumping it down to players like Eddie Elliott and Jarrell Elder. Well, he loves those crossing routes because one that's in the middle of the field, he can see right to it. It's right in front of him. And those backs are very quick. He gets there and let the backs do the work after the catch. It's going to be a handoff. It looks like that was Jarrell Elder getting his first action of today. But interesting calls. Westchester seems to be spreading out the field, trying to get running lanes for these running backs and Brandon Monk and Jarrell Elder. Well, these backs are very good in the open field. As you can see, they make many defenders miss when they get on space. It's very hard to tackle them. So they like to get them moving, get them a lot of jet sweeps and stuff as Moriarty changes the play at the line. Tim Brown goes in motion. Pistol formation. It's going to be a handoff to Elder off the outside. He's going to bounce it. He's going to find some running room, and it's going to be close to the first down. Good job by uh, Elder. To see nothing happening in the middle, bounce it out, get as much as he can. It sets up third and medium depth, third and short here for Moriarty and Westchester's offense. Oh, no, he actually did get the first down there, Dave. They're going to mark it a first down. They're going to move the chains. But the sophomore running back from Allentown has proven he is a reliable. He is not just a backup. Well, three weeks ago against Seton Hill, he exploded for three touchdowns. Two weeks, ago, two weeks ago against Millersville, he had a touchdown. So he's looking to be more involved in this offense. Moriarty, five wide receiver set, dumps it down to his All-American. 
who's going to be right at that first down marker. So it's going to be another completion for Moriarty, who looks comfortable in the pocket. Tim Brown, that's three receptions here in this first quarter. Moriarty was looking like he's found a, a significant target here in Tim Brown. And I'm looking for Tim Brown to be a little more involved in this offense. He had a touchdown last week, had two touchdowns two weeks ago against Millersville, but they were red zone targets. He's not getting much down the field. To go off that point, I think he's more well-conditioned. So he's been practicing with the team the last couple of weeks as they put Mayor in motion. They're going to throw it that direction. The ball is going to be caught by the Golden Rams, and he is going to go down the sidelines. That is going to be a Golden Rams touchdown for number 83, Jim Hurley. And Zamir McDonald was able to get his hands up and bat that ball at the line of scrimmage, but he tipped it up in the air, falls in the laps of the Westchester receiver who has the presence of mind to stay with the play. They still had running lanes. He cuts it right upfield for a huge score. Great play by Westchester. That is Hurley's third touchdown of the season. Brandon pulsing in the kick, the extra point. And that may just be the momentum swing that Westchester needed. That's a great heads-up play to realize that the play is not dead. Catch the ball, look up field, hit the hole hard, goes for a nice 60-yard touchdown. Kick is up. The kick is good. Westchester takes a 7-0 lead early in this one. 3.52 remaining. You are watching this presentation of Sports Fan Base Network. Welcome back. Westchester takes a 7-0 lead off of Jim Hurley's long this season. That's from 62 yards out. And you normally don't think of a play like that to get some rhythm going for an offense, but that builds confidence for a quarterback, especially a sophomore quarterback like Moriarty. Seeing a play like that develop gets things on your side. Now it's Westchester's defense can go out and get a fourth straight stop because this, Bear, this Golden Bears offense still has yet to get a first down in this first quarter. Absolutely. A broken play. Westchester got lucky early in this one. And that's two broken plays. Granted, mm -hmm. this broken play happened on the back end of a tip ball at the line, but that's two broken plays that we've seen from Westchester, just one that they were able to pick up for a score. Back to kick this one away is Connor Foley. He has three touchbacks on this season. The return is number 21, Marcus Kelly. It is a high kick. It's going to be taken from the five. Kelly's going to find his way down to the 29-yard line. That's going to be Raheem. Excuse me. That's number five. And you notice... This Golden Bears offense, we came into this game looking at those two receivers who have yet to be a factor in this game. They've actually only thrown the ball three times so far in this first quarter. So I think that's a, a ticket to Westchester's defense and how much they've been stymieing this offense. This Golden Bears offense isn't used to having this much pressure applied to them. Westchester has forced three interceptions and a fumble recovery last week. They picked up where they left off. Ball is spotted on the 29-yard line for Barden. And I think Westchester's soon gets set with this defense. Four wide receivers set for Barden. It's going to be a handoff. Williams is going to find the crease, and he is off to the races. He's down the sidelines. He's going to be taken down at the 30. But what a great piece of running by Terry, Terry Williams, their main running back. Terry Williams gets this offense going. As I said last, or I said earlier in the broadcast, Dave, last week, Chris found at 400 yards on the ground. And the big reason there is their number one running back, Terry Williams, who was able to break it to the outside. That's the first time we've seen Westchester's defense let up any kind of yardage, and it's a very big game here. Averaging 203 yards on the ground are the Golden Bears. Shotgun formation for Barton, three wide receiver set. It's going to be a handoff to Williams once again. 
leaps over a Westchester defender, and he's going to be close to the first down, but this drive has all been Williams. And it looks like Golden Bears have got, got some kind of rhythm here established on the ground, which then opens up the passing game. So this could be very dangerous for Westchester's defense. They cannot let this Golden Bears offense get going. The ends have to contain. That's Andrew Cohen on the outside. Instead of crashing down, they're going to have to try and stop that option going to the outside. And they may be getting a little pass rush hungry as they've already gotten two sacks on this quarterback. They cannot not get too gritty. They have to stay home, can't get too invested in the play. Four wide receiver set for Barden. Williams on his right hip. It's going to be a handoff to Williams. Just going to all a left side, but coming down with the tackle is number 44 of the Golden Rams. That's their lean man. That's Ralph Reeves. And now Westchester doesn't have to worry about stuff going down the field behind them. Yes, they're in their own red zone, but there's no big play capability. You only have 20 yards to work with. So you don't have to worry about getting beat from behind you. You have to worry about containing. Containing is what you need to do in the red zone. Kevin Dugan and Ralph Reeves came into the game with 27 tackles apiece. Two main linebackers in the middle. Second down and seven from the 17. Four wide receivers set for Barton. Reeves applying pressure, but there's going to be a flag on the play. Head referee Nate Williams will make the call. Looks like it's going to be a false start. As the play was called dead, it is a false start. It's going to back them up to second down and 12. Now, as you can see, Offensive, offensive line made it got a little jittery as Westchester was coming up with that A-gap blitz. They were showing pressure, and they've already, show, they've already shown today that when they apply pressure, they can get to the quarterback. So obviously, the Kutztown offensive line is very worried about that. Second down and 12. Four wide receiver set. The low wide receiver on the near side. is Kellen Williams. It's going to be a handoff up the middle, and Westchester says no as Reeves is fired up. That's what we need right there. Stop this Golden Bears offense. They're able to get two big plays on the ground, but now they get backed up for a loss, and now we have a third down and very long outside of the red zone, almost outside of field goal position. The junior from North Penn is making noise in this one. Third down and 17. The Golden Bears come out in a five wide receiver set. One minute remaining in this first quarter. Westchester applying pressure. Barden looking to his left, throws it down immediately and it is gonna be reeled in, but it's gonna be short of the first down. Number 80. 82, that's Kellen Williams, the junior, who's had a really nice season. And right there, all they were trying to do is make this field goal a little bit more in range here. They were trying to go for the end zone, realizing that, hey, we can just get in field goal position, we can get three points on the board here, make it a 7-3 game at the end of this first quarter. Kicking this one is number 91, Rosenfeld. He's two of two on the season with a long at 27, so this one will be his new cr long if he makes this one. Kick it looks, appear to be blocked. It is no good. How big has Westchester's special teams been for the last two weeks? Mm -hmm. uh, they had a punt return for a touchdown last week. They get a uh, nicked field goal here at the end of this first quarter. So Westchester's special teams is stepping up big. Could be one of the keys to this game. The 35-yard field goal was no good. Westchester will take over on the 20-yard line. Moriarty trying to look down the field. Comes out. Three wide receivers set. Moriarty puts Adam Dempsey in motion. It's going to be a handoff to Monk, who's going to find some wiggle room up the gut, and that will conclude this first quarter. Westchester leads 7-0 over Kutchtown. You are watching this presentation of Westchester football on SFBN.
Welcome you back to John A. Farrell Stadium. And after the first quarter, first quarter, Westchester leads 7-0. That Moriarty is having a great game. He's 6 of 8 for 108 and a long touchdown pass to Jim Hurley for 62 yards. Got a 62-yard touchdown pass. What I'm noticing here is Tim Brown, three receptions for 32 yards, two big plays, one coming over the middle to let Moriarty get that rhythm and get established. That was really the catalyst for why Moriarty has all these yards. That's what a tight end is used for. Stretch that middle of the field out. And also I'm looking at the Golden Bears offensive attack. Only have one reception here for 10 yards. So that's a great job by Westchester's defense. Second down and two for Moriarty. He's going to be set in the pistol. It's going to be a handoff to Monk. Great running room on the outside. He's going to cut it back. Be tripped up at the 35, but area of holding. Yeah, we got some dirty laundry on the field there, and I think this is going to be coming back here for the Westchester. Coach Zwan cannot be happy as there has been penalties all over the place. It's going to be a hold on Westchester. That will push him back. And that's a consistent problem that Westchester has week after week after week. Too many penalties. They start to beat themselves. That is Westchester's third penalty of the game for 35 yards. As number 72 of the Golden Rams hobbles off the field, that's center Devin LeBeau. So Eric Morrison, the redshirt freshman, is going to have to come in for a play. Second down and 12. Pistol formation for Moriarty. Three wide receiver set. Moriarty's looking down the field. He's going to hit his target mare over in a crossing pattern. He's going to be able to escape the defender and pick up an additional five yards. Great job by Mayer along the sidelines. Look at the big fellow keeping his legs churning. Drags that defender across the first down marker, able to move the chains. That's the kind of hustle and effort that we want from Westchester. Let's keep this drive going. Mayer has done a phenomenal job down the sidelines. On the season, Mayer has reeled in 11 for four touchdowns, so he seems to be one of Mario Moriarty's targets. Three wide receivers set in the pistol. Moriarty's going to do a double move down the sidelines, and it's going to be thrown. Eddie Elliott was the intended wide receiver. It appears the ball was thrown out of bounds, but the flag could have been pass interference. And it seems like there was a lot of contact on that sideline. I don't know how much contact was on that sideline over there. It didn't really seem like the Westchester offensive player, Elliott, could really have made that much of a play on the ball, but we'll see what this what this call is going to be. Head official is going to call pass interference on the defense. That will give the Golden Rams an automatic first down. And moves that chains even more, putting it in Golden Bears territory, backing up this defense a lot. Westchester catches a little bit of a break there. Second penalty of the day for Kutztown. Moriarty has already tossed one. He's on his way to three TDs. That would be the fourth consecutive game. It's going to be shotgun formation. Adam Dempsey will go in motion. It's going to be a handoff to Brandon Monk up the middle, but he is going to be tripped up by their big linebacker. That's number 46, Zach Delp. And he virtually came in untouched off that right side. I don't think that they were focusing on him, thinking that Monk could hit that hole harder and they could let him roam free, but he comes and makes the play. Well, he already comes up. Pistol formation, three wide receiver set. As there was encroachment, number 93 of the Golden Bears crossed, and that's going to draw a flag. And that's the second time that's happened where we've seen Moyarty come up to change the play at the line, and the Golden Bears have jumped. Last time they didn't make contact, but this time they did. And let's see, it should be an encroachment call, but the rest may have other plans. Dean Gregory pleading that it was not on him. It appears they're going to throw a flag on Westchester, and but head like official... Nate Williams is still discussing it. It looks like Tim Brown is throwing up his hand saying, I think they're going to call it on me, but I don't think that I moved. But it looks like Westchester is going to be moving back here five yards. It's an interesting call because it is second down. That would back up the Golden Rams as they all look to the sideline. There is, they're going to pick up the flag. So, very interesting call. I'll tell you what here, Dave. I would not like to be a referee. That is a hard <laughs> job right there. Yes, it is. <laughs> Referees confuse themselves, but they pick up the flag, so we'll resume play. Moriarty comes out. Pistol formation. Three wide receiver set. Monk the deep back. It's going to be a play action of Monk, and it's going to be thrown to Tim Brown in the flat, and he has some running room. Pick up the first down and more. 
Great job by Tim Brown getting open in the flat and then turning it right upfield for the first down. Pat Moriarty looks very comfortable in that pocket, and this is what I was looking for for the sophomore quarterback. Poise in the pocket. Don't look, don't look too antsy. Don't look too jittery. Calm down. Make good throws and good decisions. Brown picks up his fourth reception early in this one. Brandon Monk goes in motion. It's going to go to Monk off the right side. He is going to be taken down after two yards as Delp continues to make his name known. Moriarty's no huddle offense for the Golden Rams and Coach Bills won. Three wide receivers set. It's going to be thrown and it's going to be complete along the sidelines. And that is going to be close to the first down. Number 87, that's the big fella for the Golden Rams, Driggin. And uh, Westchester's got this DPH touchdown row. defense on their heels here, Dave, with this hurry-up offense. And Moyardi's just shredding this secondary of the Golden Rams, virtually driving up the field with no resistance. And they did get the first down. They moved the chains. Westchester looking to the sidelines. DiPietro is picking up that reception. It was a good job by him to fight for more yards and pick up the first down. They're going to put Elder in motion. And that's going to be incomplete in the area of Tim Brown. Um, looks like a little bit of miscommunication there between Brown and Moriarty. Moriarty thought he was going to the outside. Tim Brown turns around on the hitch route and cuts it back to the inside and is thrown behind him a little bit. One thing I noticed, Dave, with this Westchester offense is that when they go to change the play at the line, they all jump up sort of and then look back to the sideline. And that's what's getting the encroachment calls and the offside calls here on the Kutztown defense. So they got to be aware of that. Five wide receivers. Moriarty is going to throw in the direction. And Tim Brown picks up his fifth reception down at the 15-yard line. He has been targeted early and often. And Moriarty took a shot on that play. Gets up kind of slow. Looks like he's good, though. Stands in the pocket. Delivers a strong throw there to Tim Brown. Tim Brown is finding so many holes in this Kutztown secondary. Third down and one. Westchester leads early in this game. 7-0 off a 62-yard pass. Completed to Jim Hurley on a broken play. Third down and one. Handoff will go to Outer. Finds a crease. Picks up the first down and more. Great job by the big guys up front. And you know what's more deflating for a defense? It's when you drive down the field in small chunks. Five-yard gain. Then a 12-yard pass play. Then a seven-yard run. Then another 15-yard pass play. Just continuing to get chunks of yards on this Kutztown defense. Moving down the field seemingly at will. Kutztown has not found an answer on this drive for Westchester yet. And it looks like Westchester, if they keep this up, is going to come out of this possession with seven points. Connor Wells has replaced LeBeau as the center. First down and 10 at the 11-yard line. It's going to be a handoff to Elder off the right side, and he's going to be stacked up in the backfield. Good looks, job by the defenders of Kutztown. Looks like Kutztown was ready for that play right now. They've seen that formation. They know that when Elder comes out in motion and that spread eagle set, that he's coming over for the jet sweep. They were ready for it. Stopped it for a loss of two. And on the tackle was the big fell, number 94, McDonald and Delp. Give me shotgun formation for Moriarty. Two wide receivers. Puts DiPietro in motion. It's going to be a play action. And he is going to be taken down for a loss. Great play by number 31, Tajir Jefferson. And that was a big loss. And that's not what you want. The last thing you want in the red zone is to take a sack, especially a sack of that proportion. A loss of about 10 yards, almost 15 yards there. Moriarty backpedals, tried to escape pressure, wasn't able to do it. And now Westchester is facing a third and 23 out of the red zone now. Still in field goal range, but they were all down around their own 10 yard, or down around Kutzeran's 10 yard line. Sorry, they do. Two weeks ago, Jefferson was named the PSAC East Defensive Player of the Week having 11 tackles in the matchup against Cheney. Setting up third down and 23 for the Golden Rams. Kutztown will burn their first time out. Westchester leads 7-0, third down and 23. When we come back, you are watching this presentation of Westchester football on SFBN. Hey, you. Who, me? You like pro sports? Yeah. Do you like college sports? Of course. Do you like high school sports? 
I guess. Maybe you just don't know much about them. Where can I go to learn more about Philadelphia Area High School Athletics? Watch Varsity Voice every other Wednesday, 6 p.m. on TCN. Welcome back. Westchester leads 7 0 with 954 on the clock. Big down here because you have to try and get back in the field goal range. You have to try to get back in the field goal range, but I know Westchester wants more than that. They want six points. They want a touchdown. Look for Moyarty target Tim Brown here in the well outside of the red zone here to try to get back either to within field goal range, maybe even pick up the first down around the goal line. Last week Adam Dency found a play action in the corner of the end zone. Expect something similar. Moyarty shotgun formation, three wide receiver set. He's looking, looking, he's going to throw it deep down the field and is going to be complete. <laughs> None other than number 86 himself. Uh, what I say, look for it. He's been straight in the middle of this field the whole time as you have a Kutztown defender down here. He looks prepared to be injured. Looks like we have two Kutztown defenders down. There are two injured players for the Golden Bears. That is going to be... A great play, but down. All refreshments for SFBN crew today are provided by Body Armor, the official sports drink of SFBN. Body Armor is an all-natural super drink and is a healthier alternative to Gatorade or vitamin water. With 2.5 times more electrolytes than Gatorade and double the vitamins of vitamin water. For more information, go to www drinkbodyarmor.com. I got my strawberry banana body armor right here, Dave, ready for me. <laughs> I got my lemon lime, don't worry. Powering us, powering us for this broadcast here. But what a great job by Tim Brown, who looks like he's in regular season form now. Uh, this is what you needed. It took a couple of weeks to get him back and recuperated in the offense, but once he got recuperated in the offense, boy, is he recuperated. Pat, it's easily Moriarty's number one target, as every time he drops back, he's virtually looking for him. The first player to walk off the field was number two. That's Kenny Williams, a redshirt junior who's at the safety position. And we saw Ke as there's a player down on the field. We're going to step aside. You are listening to this presentation of SFBN. Hi, I'm Marty Bystrom, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. In my experience in Major League Baseball, I know how important it is for high school athletes to gain exposure. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you are a small to medium sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866 PayEasy. Westchester decides to kick the field, the field goal. Paulson's going to kick is up. The kick is no good, no good. The 22-yard attempt is no good, but there is a flag down on the play. There's a little bit of confusion because it looks like Westchester was celebrating, but it is on Kutztown's defense, so Westchester gets a new life here. Early in the game, the Golden Bears got a roughing in the kicker to keep their drive alive. This is a huge penalty because even if it's offside, that's five yards. That will place them first down and goal. It was on the one. Inside Kutztown's five-yard line. And maybe a little bit of turn of events here. Usually penalties hurt Westchester, but right now penalties are hurting Kutztown. Westchester may get a new life, and they got to take advantage of that if they do. And it will be on the Golden Bears. What a crucial penalty in the first half. Not only does it put it inside their five yard line, it puts it on Kutztown's two yard line. Westchester needs two yards to score here and goes up critical two scores. So they're gonna mark you down fourth and two. Okay, so it was running into kicker half the distance to the goal. That will be a fourth down and two, and Westchester is going to put their offense down on the three-yard line, so they're going to go for it. I think this is the right call. You're up seven points. Yard cuts down two-yard line. Your running game has been working. Why not try to punch it in here and go up two touchdowns? And there's going to be a timeout on the field as Kutztown will burn. They probably want to talk this one over 
fourth down being such a big play. Well, Coach Bill Swan is thinking this, hey, our running game has been working today. Our passing game has been working. Tim Brown has been shedding Kutztown secondary, and Kutztown, two Kutztown players have just been pulled off the field with injuries. So Bill Swan is going to take advantage of that. I think this is the correct call here on fourth down. Last week on the goal line on fourth down, they decided to go with play action and throw it to Tim Brown. He wasn't able to reel it in. Interesting to see if they decide, because Elder was the, the back on the play, if they decide to run it up the gut with LeBeau missing. That's a big loss in the middle. Mm -hmm. And even though this passing attack, Moriarty has been shredding this defense, Elder leads the team in receptions this year. Their running backs are a very big part of their passing game. So don't be surprised if you see Elder or Monk come out of the backfield for a little screenplay to try to get those two yards on the ground. 9.29 remaining in this second quarter. Westchester knocking on the door. Even if Westchester gets it, Westchester's defense has been doing such a great job. They're going to try and get extra points. Moriarty will go under center. I formation. Elder to deep back. He's going to put a man in motion. It's going to be play action, and it is going to be caught. Touchdown, Golden Rams. And that is going to be 84 who reeled that one in for the Golden Rams. Had everybody on that Kutztown defense full. They all bit on the play action pump fake. It throws it right over the top of that, those defenders. That's a score for Westchester. Big points put up on the board here on capitalizing on Kutztown's mistake. Paulson in the kick this one. It's a clean snap. Kick is up. It is no good. So Paulson has missed a field goal and he's missed an extra point. Westchester leads 13-0 with 921 remaining. You are watching this presentation of SFBN by Payroll Service Solutions. Blue Stein, Michael and Company, certified public accountants, believe that your bottom line is as important to them as it is to you. Why? Because they care about the things that you care about. Whereas most accountants can take your numbers and put them on financial statements and tax returns, Blue Stein and Michael work with you through the year to help you solve problems by providing sound professional advice. They enable you to make key business decisions, and they are with you throughout the entire year, not just tax time. Blue Stein and Michael are not just hired hands. They are part of your team, and they provide professional service when you need it most. Blue Stein and Michael specialize in accounting, tax, and consulting services for small businesses, primarily for the construction industry. If you're looking for yes men, hire someone else. But if you want sound advice from service-oriented CPAs, then you'll want to call Blue Stein and Michael at 215-635-3200. That's Blue Stein and Michael at 215-635-3200. Welcome back. Foley's kick is going to be returned from the 15-yard line. And he is going to be taken down at the 30 as there's an injured Golden Ram on the field. But Westchester's coming down with that one was number 84, Bill Ford. That's his first career touchdown as a Golden Ram. And that's a great thing to get under your belt, that first career touchdown, first collegiate score. Kind of come at a better time as it puts up... Two scores for Westchester above Kutztown, and it looks like the injured Golden Ram is getting up very slowly, but he's up. Looks like he's going to come off under his own power. It's good to see. May have just got the wind knocked out of him. But Westchester special teams, that's an area of concern because you missed a chip shot field goal from 22 yards out. Then you missed an extra point. That's crucial. Those are, those are points that you need. Those are points you can't afford to give away. All right. Now coming back out for the... Golden Bears is their quarterback, Chad Barton. Three wide receiver set. Barton's going to look and try and connect on the curl route. It's going to be too tall for his intended wide receiver. That's Williams. And it looks like Kutztown's trying to get this offense, you know, going through the pass. Where that's where their normal strength is. And Westchester's done such a good job on defense that the Kutztown can't find that identity. And when you have an identity as an offense and you can't find it, you struggle mightily. And that's what we're seeing here for Kutztown. They can't even get a rhythm established My here. My key player to game has not been targeted. That's Cody Reed, who has six touchdowns on the season. Some could be an eye on. Three wide receiver set, Barton shotgun formation. 
He's going to be looking right. He's going to throw it deep down the field. He's going to come back, and it is going to be incomplete. That would have been a tough grab, but what a great effort by the Golden Bear. And good defense there by the Golden Rams. This secondary is really stepping up big, not allowing the receivers to get any space. He was down with them the entire time there. As we see Pat Moriarty here on the sideline, warming up with his backup center, that could mean that the starting center is out for the game. We'll see what kind of dynamic that plays for Westchester's offense. Pass was intended for 6-3 wide receiver Anthony Kelly. So third down and 10, nine minutes remaining in the second quarter. Westchester leads 13-0. Barden puts three wide receivers out, shotgun formation. Andrew Cohen gets a phenomenal jump, but he's going to run around. Barden's going to dump it off to his to Derek Scott. That's his running back. He's going to pick up the first down. And that's what they look for. Kutztown relies heavily on his passing attack, but Barton relies heavily on his legs. But we got Dirty Laundry here in the field here, Dave. This may be coming back, but it looks like it's going to be on Westchester. The penalty will be declined. It was against the Golden Rams. Regardless, first down for Kutztown. They're starting to get some momentum. And as you said, Andrew Cohen got a great jump on that outside, but Barton was able to keep the play alive, keep the play excited, moving his legs, and then keep his eyes downfield. He didn't take off running right away, able to find his receiver, move the chains. Barton shotgun formation. He's going to dump it down the right side. It's going to be Kelly. He's going to go down the sidelines. That's going to be a pickup of 25. And this is the passing attack that we said that was so dangerous for Kutztown. And we said that Westchester was in danger because if Kutztown found their identity in this passing game, they're very hard to stop. But it looks like they're getting a little bit of momentum on this drive. Well, the first drive of the game, Westchester was getting great pass rush and then decided to mix it up, go with Williams. Something we're seeing a lot of curl routes and in the flat. And I think Westchester needs to go back to what they did on those first couple of positions. Get more pressure on the quarterback. He looks like he's too comfortable back there in that pocket. Four wide receiver set for Barden. He's looking to his right. He's going to throw in that direction on the slam pattern. Williams comes down with it. And the ball is loose. Westchester picks it up. It appears that big number 92 ship. It was Barry Lyons. They're going to determine if he was down or not. But Westchester waiting for a call. It was a slam pattern to Williams. He got the first down and more, but the ball was loose at the end. And sometimes coaches don't like when you try to drag defenders as it's going to be Westchester football. Because sometimes when you keep trying to drag those defenders, that's when gang tacklers come. And if you keep a defender, if you keep an offender up, that second defender comes down and he's looking for the strip and they get it. Kutztown coach is on the sideline livid, thinking that his player was down by contact. That's how the ball came This out. Westchester University sideline went berserk on that. Barry Lyons comes up with the recovery. Westchester's in business. Ball will be spotted on the 20 yard line so that negates all the momentum that Kutztown was having. That's what you need as a defense. An offense gets momentum against you, come up with either a big play or a turnover and that's what they get. Westchester's defense has been carrying them here in this first half. It's going to be a handoff to Eddie Elliott and he is going to go nowhere. Number 31 of Kutztown blowing up the play. That's Tajir Jefferson, and he is making an impact as the redshirt freshman. Redshirt freshman is coming up big here from that linebacker position, coming up and filling those holes. As we see, number two for Kutztown is coming back on the field in his own power, and we saw him make two very good plays there, coming up from this strong safety position and making those plays there in the first quarter. So it's good to see him back on the field for Kutztown. The Elliott carry will go for negative five, second down and 15 for Moriarty. He's going to put a man in motion. That's Elliott. It's going to swing pass. He's going to make up the yardage and more. He's down the sidelines, lowers the boom, and he's going to be down at the 35-yard line, 20 yards on the pitch and catch. And we said that Westchester running backs lead, these team, lead this team in receptions, so they're a huge part of this passing attack. As you see, get them out in open space because these backs are very hard to get down on the ground once they're out in open space. Good job by Moriarty finding his target early, letting him do his work with his feet and get the first down. The 5'11 senior is very versatile as he is a running back when he first came to Westchester, was a special teamer, and now they move him to wide receiver, and he can play a lot of different positions. And you see so many offenses nowadays, whether it's college or pro, have that kind of flanker, kind of slot receiver, dual threat player, and that's what Elliott is for this Steve offense. Pietro goes in motion, Moriarty's looking down the field, he's going to launch it in that direction. What a phenomenal one-handed catch at the 35-yard line. Di Pietro is making some noise. A great one-handed coach. Way to lay out there for your 
we're a quarterback over the middle of the field. And that's tonight's Stoll Agency play of the game. Stoll Bonds and Insurance specializes in the construction business industry. For all of your bonding, construction, and insurance needs, please go to our website at www.stollagency.com. Ball is spotted on the 37-yard line. Pistol formation for Moriarty. It's going to be a handoff to Brandon Monk. He has some running room. He's going to cut it to the outside. He's at the 15. He's going to be taken down at the 12. What a, a great run by the senior. Hey, good job. Gets up the field, but once he gets to the secondary, finds that cutback leg, bounces it to the outside, gets some more yardage along the sideline. Got to hold that football, though. He got stripped. Luckily, the ball landed out of bounds, but good run by Monk. Westchester not messing around. They're going straight down the field. But what a phenomenal catch by DiPietro. That was a great job over the middle of the field, laying out for your quarterback. That's what you got to have. You got to have no fear going across that middle. Can't be afraid here in footsteps. Westchester in the red zone. It's going to be another handoff. This time the Monk is going to load his shoulder. He's going to be down at the five. So it's going to be a two-yard gain, second down, and five to go with 5.30 remaining in this second quarter. And this is what Westchester can't do. They cannot beat themselves. We've seen way too many penalties already here in this first half. Last thing they need to kill momentum on this drive is penalties. So keep moving the ball with the run and pass, having good mix-up of plays, and they're moving down the field very well. Checking in to the game is number one, Eddie Elliott. Checking out is Driggins. Moriarty's going to come out. Pistol formation, three wide receiver set. And Westchester's almost getting them to jump, and they're going to throw the flag as they're pointing in the direction of Doug Gilbert trying to get the 6'4 junior the jump. It's going to depend on the call. All right, I said is when Westchester changes the play, they all pop up very quickly. It looks like they're almost trying to get the Golden Bears to, to jump off sides here. Let's see if it worked. Head official Nate Williams calls encroachment. That's going to be half the distance to the goal, so Westchester's going to pick up an extra yard or two. And I wonder if when they change the play, Westchester's trying to get Cutstown to jump off sides because when they change the play, they all jump up very quick and look back to the sideline. And that has already caused three times for Cutstown defenders to jump off sides. Three yards to go for Moyarty in this offense. In the game at the running back position is Brandon Monk. Monk has been utilized on the outside, but Moyarty is going to go under center. Expect a jet sweep or that nature. It's going to fake the jet sweep. It's going to be a handoff to Monk up the gut, and he is in for a gold ram touchdown. Good job by Monk. Keeping the feet churning. Doesn't get stopped by the first defender. Keeps powering it in for the end zone. Now Westchester goes up three scores. That is Monk's second touchdown of the season with 4.40 to go in this second quarter. Westchester pending the extra point. Westchester seems to be commanding this first half. It's been all Westchester on offense, defense, special teams. They're winning at every phase of the game right now. Clean snap. Paulson kick is up, and the kick is good. Westchester leads 20 to nothing in this second quarter. You are watching this presentation of the Sports Fan Base Network provided by the Payroll Services Solutions. Buxmon Indoor Sports Center is the area's largest indoor sports and event center with over 78,000 square feet of playing and expo surface. We offer year-round programs for toddlers to teens as well as an extensive adult league program in a variety of sports. Celebrate your birthday with an unforgettable party. Choose from Nerf Turf Tag, Bubble Soccer, or a variety of activities for a party everyone will be talking about. Buxmon is the first and only facility in the area to offer Bubble Ball Soccer. See if you have what it takes to beat the bubble. Visit our facility, conveniently located in Hatfield, PA. For the love of the game, it's Buxmon Indoor Sports Center. Welcome back. Westchester leads 20 to nothing after Brandon Monk records his second touchdown of the season. Hey, Westchester really commanded this first half on every phase of the game, offense, defense, special teams. And on offense, they're moving the ball down the field seemingly at will. Moriarty shredding this defense. Monk and Elder getting great runs off the ball. It's all Westchester right now. Foley in the kick this one. Back to return for the Golden Bears is Raheem. Kick is up. It's going to be all the way back. It's going to start from the four-yard line. Raheem's going to find a crease. He's going to be taken down to the 25-yard line. What Kutztown's going to start 
with good field position, they're going to have to try and find a solution to try and get some points on the board. And I don't really think there's anything that Kutztown is doing wrong. It's just Westchester is having too much uh, going for them on their way on the defensive end. They're getting great pressure in the face of the quarterback, coming up with key stops and coming up with a key turnover. So let's see if Westchester's defense can still hold this Kutztown offense who seemed to find a little bit of life on that last drive. Barden comes out. Four wide receivers set. Williams will be on his left hip. Barden's looking to his right. He's going to roll to the outside. Applying the pressure is Andrew Cohen. He's going to loft it down the sideline. It is going to be caught. That was intended for 82 Williams, but reeling that in was Reed. And I think he was intended for Williams, but Reed's instincts just kicked in. He went and got, went and got the football, and it looks like he might have injured his home player in the process, but he got up. Great play by Barton, extending the play once again, using his legs, but keeping his eyes downfield. 18-yard gain on the pitch and catch. Barton comes back out. Four wide receivers set. Four minutes to go in this second quarter. It's going to be a handoff to Williams who's going to bounce off a defender and he is going to be stuffed by none other than Reeves. Reeves is making his footprints and his fingerprints all over this game right now. Coming up and stopping. Kutztown virtually has no running game here in this first half and that's a huge part to Reeves coming up and making plays in the backfield. The carry will go for no gain and set up second down and 10. Westchester's have been applying pressure. They're trying to get back to Barden. Four wide receivers sit. Williams on his right hip. Reeves applying the pressure. He's going to blitz right up the middle. Barton's going to throw deep down the sideline. It's going to be incomplete for Williams. Coach Downs, head coach, is going berserk trying to get a call. That's Jim Clements. Well, he's looking for a, a pass interference call because he's seeing along the sideline that there's a lot of contact, and the Westchester defender didn't get his head turned around until very late. He seemed to get it turned around in time, but the Kutztown coach thinks that his head was turning. He thinks he was face guarding. Nonetheless, no call. That means good defense. Third down and long here for Kutztown. I also think the fact that the ball was almost thrown out of bounds also played a role. Mm -hmm. Third down and 10 from the 43. Barding comes out, empty backfield, five wide receiver set. Trips to the near side. Barden's going to be rolling to his right. He's going to throw across his body, nearly intercepted, intended for Reed. And they tell a quarterback the one thing you want to try to eliminate at all times is throwing the ball across your body back to the middle of the field. Because what you see right there, that ball was almost intercepted off the tip, and that's exactly why they tell you not to do it. I think Coach Jim Clement is trying to get his number one target, Cody Reed, involved in this game. You've seen a lot of him in this drive. And I just think there's too much pressure for Barton to sit back and make a good throw. There's no time for these routes to develop. He's got pressure in his face seemingly as soon as he drops back. So Westchester needs to keep that pressure up. Dutch gets the snap. It is a high kick. Brandon Monk will just wave it off. And what it's going to take a Kutztown bounce. Ball's going to be spotted on the 28-yard line with just under three minutes to go in this one. Golden Rams are going to try and find the end zone one more time. And the way we've seen them move the ball down the field, that should be no problem. They're seeming to do anything they want on the offensive end, whether it's run or pass. Moriarty's commanding this offense and commanding this game. But Moriarty's getting contributions from all over the team. Mayers caught one. Tim Brown going across the middle. Eddie Elliott on that swing pass. All players are getting involved. And we saw that the momentum really started when that broken tip play that ended up in a 62-yard touchdown. Uh, we said that's a really unorthodox way to get rhythm established, but it got rhythm established here for Westchester. Mm -hmm. Moriarty already thrown two touchdown passes today. He's going to fake the handoff. It's going to be complete up the middle for a first down. What a great job. Tim Brown once again. Tim Brown's got five receptions already in just the first half alone. All, you can tell he's Moriarty's number one target as soon as he drops back to pass. On the season, Moriarty is thrown for 15 touchdowns and six interceptions. He is doing a phenomenal job coming in to replace Sean McCartney this season. First down and 10 from the 39. Moriarty is going to throw intended for Brown. Didn't look like he was ready for it. Another miscommunication there by Moriarty as we have another Kutztown defender down on the field in the backfield. There is a player down on the field. 
with 2.28 on the clock. We're going to step aside as this F SFBM presentation of Westchester University football is presented by Payroll Service Solutions. The Sports Fan Base Network, this area's leader in high school sports broadcasting, is continually bringing you the most in-depth coverage. Join us for Varsity Voice every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. on TCN, where we'll have interviews with players, coaches, writers, and more, plus analysis, highlights, and in-depth features on major topics in the Delaware Valley high school sports community. Tune in every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. on TCN for the best high school sports show around, Varsity Voice, presented by SFDN. Welcome back to Injured Golden Bears, number 92, Tyrone Brown, to the senior defensive tackle. And they, they rely on him heavily on this Kutztown defense to apply pressure for both run and passing defense for Kutztown. So that could be a good hit uh, here for Kutztown. We've already seen three of their players go down for injuries. That doesn't build well for them as he's trying to limp off the field but can't seem to apply much pressure to that right ankle. Second down, Ante. you have to credit the big fellas up front, though, because Westchester's had a clean pocket today. And they've had a couple holding calls, but that's okay, because for the most part, Moriarty's been untouched, able to throw the football at will. And that's one thing that I said coming into this game, is that Westchester needs to provide Moriarty with enough time that he can stand back there, poised in the pocket, and throw the football. And Connor Welsh has done a good job replacing center number 72, Devin LeBeau. And it's Westchester's got that mentality of next man up, and he stepped up next man up as provided great protection for Moriarty and great running lanes for these Westchester running backs. With just three, Westchester's all three timeouts so they can afford to be patient with their patterns. Mm -hmm. don't, don't need to go down the field too much, don't need to try to gamble too much, you know. They have the one to two minute warning on their side and all three timeouts. Moriarty comes out, empty backfield, five wide receivers set. They're gonna put a player in motion that's going to be Eddie. That's going to be number seven of the Golden Rams. Who's going to be all the way down. It's going to be an eight-yard carry. I believe that's Deion Shaw who got the handoff. And that's a great time by the Westchester running back. Waiting, being patient, seeing that cutback lane, cutting up the field. Gets a great eight-yard gain. Excuse me, that's Aaron Young. And Moriarty is going to come back out. Third down and two. They air it out. It's going to be incomplete. Coach Zwan is not happy. Not happy with his offense there. Looking to get some points on the board before halftime. Instead, they go three and out. One timeout remaining for Kutz down as they trail in this one, 20 to nothing. Paulson back to punt this one away. And Coach Zwan is not happy with the sophomore quarterback on that decision as he had a... a a receiver wide open in the middle of the field decided to try to go towards the sideline, but incomplete Clean snap. Pass. Good kick. It is a booming kick as Kelly's going to return this one and lose the football. And he was able to jump back on top of it. Fortunate for Kutztown. Kutztown special teams is struggling this game. They've already had a nick punt. Had almost had a muffed punt on this possession. So Kutztown is starting to, you know, get a little shaky in all phases of the game. Westchester is really having them on their heels here in this first half. The Golden Bears also have to be aware. They're on their seven-yard line, so Westchester can't apply the pressure. They're going to be fortunate that you don't want to turn the ball early over here. Don't, don't want to turn the ball over, and you don't want to sack down here deep in your own territory. Mm -hmm. If there's pressure in Barton's face, he either has to try to extend the play and get it out of bounds, or he needs to throw the ball away. A sack is not something you not want to take here. Four wide receivers set for Barton. It's going to just be a handoff up the middle for Scott, and he's going to pick up three. Westchester's going to take their first time out here as Coach Juan wants that ball back. He does want that ball back. He wants to go up four scores here going into halftime, and I don't blame him. Put the put the pedal to the metal, put your foot on their throat, and he doesn't want to have Kutztown have any left to come back into this game. Interesting play call because you want to try and get some breathing room, but at the same time, you want to try and put points up. But additionally, you do get the ball to begin the second half, so there is some wiggle room. I think it's all about trying to play it safe here. Uh, you haven't had much success going down the field in the passing game against Westchester's defense, and as you said earlier, the last thing you want is an interception, so I think Kutztown's frame of mind is to play it safe. You have to look here. It's been a great day. A lot of fans coming out on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. 
you love to see uh, the Westchester community coming in to support their football team. It is the breast cancer game, the pink out. We see all the fans coming in support on this beautiful day. Yeah, it's been a pink out. As you can see, all the Westchester University cheerleaders wearing the pink shirts, encouraging, supporting breast cancer awareness. It's a great day here for football at Westchester University. Barney comes out. Four wide receiver set. He's going to be looking, looking. He's going to decide to take it. He is going to be sacked. Westchester is going to take a timeout, but this ferocious defensive line is getting after the quarterback today. And That's Barton, Ganzelli. Barton tried to step up and keep his eyes on the field and make a play, but then got hit on the back end. Took actually a pretty big hit, and I said the sack is something you don't want to take. Lucky it wasn't for that much of a loss, only about like a one or two yard loss on the play. Third down and eight, four cuts down as we can't stress enough the passion and community that here at Westchester University. And when it's going good, it's going great. The fans are all behind it in this game. There's great fan support. I'm loving what I'm seeing here from Westchester today at this football game. Big crowd, great game. Westchester's band will be performing at halftime. As at halftime, I will be interviewing Westchester University basketball coach Damian Blair. Basketball season right around the corner. Looking, you know, high hopes for Westchester. Had a little bit of a disappointing season uh, last year, to say the least, uh, losing in the in the PSAC conference uh, tournament. Um, but they're looking for a bounce back season. What I'm looking for is that women's team. That women's team looks very strong coming into this basketball season. Yes, they are, and they are led by their head coach. And it's going to be a five, four wide receiver set for Barden. Westchester's bringing the house. They're going to move the pocket. They're going to roll him to the outside, and he is going to be hit. Phenomenal job by the Golden Rams to stuff him and force fourth down. Burn their last time out, get the ball back in good field position. And one of the best things about a defense is when they move cohesively. Everyone shifted over, everyone knew their lanes and knew what they were supposed to do so that when pressure gets applied, that secondary doesn't lapse and open up lanes. They can keep the pressure on and keep the pressure on the receivers back in the secondary. Great there's, job by Westchester. There is plenty of time left on the clock for Moriarty and this quick strike offense. Hurley reeled one in from 62 yards out. Bill Forey got his first touchdown. Touchdown. In addition, the brand of Monk putting some points on the board. And that's great clock management by this Westchester staff, realizing that they still have time if we use our timeouts now and get three critical stops so we get the ball back in good field position and we can still put points on the board. Reminder, Brandon Monk had a kick return for a touchdown last week from 96 yards out. He is on the 50-yard line. Dutch is ready to boot this one away. Westchester applying pressure. It's going to be a clean kick high, and Monk's going to wait for a fair catch exactly on the 50-yard line. 50 yards to go with a minute 13 on the clock. All right, they can do it. We've seen them stretch the field. We've seen them stretch Kutztown's defense all the way down the field on three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back possessions, so it's nothing for Pat Moriarty in this offense. With every first down, the clock will stop the move of the chains, giving... Westchester additional time, but first you got you got to pick up that first down. We just need to see the same stuff that we've been seeing this first half. Good pocket for Moriarty. Good catches by these receivers. Good decisions by Moriarty down the field. Moriarty, three wide receiver set. Elder to deep. Moriarty is going to look, look. He's going to throw deep down the field intended for his big tight end, Brown. There is a flag. There couldn't have been pass interference or illegal touching down the field. Moriarty looking for his big tight end down the field. Wasn't able to haul it in, but we'll see what the flag's on, Dave. Is in the secondary. Nate Williams, our head referee. It's going to be a holding call against the Golden Bears. That will pick up a first down and move it and additionally stop the clock. So it moves the chains, stops the clock, and it wasn't even on a play. It was on a penalty. Penalties are costly, especially at this time of the game. Westchester got a little bit of a boost here. Let's see what they can do with it. Three wide receivers at the bottom of your screen is Adam Dempsey. Moriarty looking, looking. He's going to cross on the crossing pattern, and he is going to be blown up. But the clock continues to tick. 
Just under a minute remaining in this one. Moriarty goes right up. Shotgun formation. He's going to look to his right. He's going to roll back to his left. He's going to wave down the field. He's going to throw across the middle. Finds his target and Mayer. And Mayer's going to find his way all the way down to the 10. How about that play by Moriarty? Rolling to his left. Keeping his eyes down the field. Directing traffic. And now they're hurrying up in this offense. They have 36 seconds left. But the clock is stopped here. 27-yard game. Moriarty will spike it. He's going to have second down and 10 with... 30 seconds remaining before halftime. Great job by Moriarty commanding his offense. That's a great job of spinning out of the pocket there. Not also just looking down the field. He was able to keep his eyes down the field and seeing, seeing the rush and threw it all the way down in the middle of the field. That's also a cardinal sin, though, because you don't want to throw it over the middle and get intercepted. It's a cardinal sin when you're throwing across your body, but he did it in a very good way. He directed his receivers, seeing where the holes were telling him, go sit down in that hole and I'll deliver a good throw. Three wide receivers set at the bottom of the screen is Eddie Elliott. Moriarty's looking in that direction. He throws the crossing pattern to Mayer, who's behind him. Mayer got blown up on that play. Wasn't able to look at him. Moriarty delivered it a little behind him there. But they still have two downs to work with to get it in. And now we have a flag on the field. There is a flag down on the field. It looks like an area of holding. Penalties, 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 Dave. They hurt you. Nate Williams, our head referee. Coming up next for the halftime report, I'll be interviewing head coach Damian Blair of the men's team. Is unsportsmanlike conduct on the Golden Bears? That will give Westchester a fresh set of downs. That's a lot of penalties here early on for Kutztown. Very fortunate for the Golden Rams to reset. There's been a little bit of penalties on both teams. A little bit more costly for Kutztown, but Westchester's had their fair share of penalties in this first half. Westchester's going to come out. Pistol formation. Brandon Monk's going to be the deep back. Adam Dency at the bottom of your screen. They're going to put a wide receiver in motion. Moriarty's looking that direction. He's going to throw it through the back of the end zone. Smart play. Nobody was open. Good right. coverage. And if you're going to miss it throwing into the back of the end zone, miss it high so there's no chance of anyone catching the ball if you're going to miss. Good job by Moriarty. I don't fault that because it's still second down and goal at Kutztown five-yard line. 20 seconds remaining. You won points on this drive. You cannot afford to not come away with at least three. Especially when you have this much momentum and Kutztown gets the ball back in the second half because if Kutztown gets the ball back and score, it's only a two-possession game. Moriarty comes out. Pistol formation. He's looking to his right. Rolls back to his left. Throws it. Almost batted down. Intended for his target and mayor. Third down and five. And that was big number 94 is Amir McDonald getting his hands up. That's the second time he's able to tip a ball at the line of scrimmage. Good presence of mind. If you can't get to the quarterback, get those hands up and bat the ball down. Big down here because if you don't get it, you're probably bringing out the field goal unit. And we've already seen them miss one chip shot field goal, so I don't know how much faith they have in this field goal unit. They're going to try to get seven points here. Shotgun formation for Moriarty. Brandon Monk on his right hip. He's going to roll to that side. He's going to throw it, and it is going to be complete for a Golden Ram touchdown. Number 11, Mayer, and he is having himself a ball game. What a job by Mayer today. Two great catches on the last drive, two good catches on this drive, plus the score. Moriarty, that's his third touchdown of the game. The Westchester Rams seem to be running away with it in this first half. That is Mayer's fifth touchdown of the season. In addition, that gives Moriarty... Four consecutive games of three touchdowns. In the kick, this one is Paulson. Snap is good. Kick is up. Kick is good. Westchester leads 27 to nothing with nine seconds remaining before halftime. Moriarty commanded that offense. We said that a, a minute and 30 seconds was plenty of time for this offense to go down the field and score. And they went down in the field and scored with nine seconds remaining on the clock. Good job by this Westchester offense. Moriarty has looked sharp. He seems more comfortable getting into a rhythm early on in this game. That's As you said, that's three games in a row of three touchdowns or more. And three touchdowns coming in this first half. Coming up next, a halftime report presented by the National Guard. I will be interviewing head basketball coach at Westchester University, Damian Blair, and talk about what's coming up this season. I'm excited to see what, what basketball has in store for Westchester. As we know, football is the main sport, but basketball is only up and up. Should be an exciting season. Only a month away. 
You never have too much basketball and football. It's a wonderful time of the year. Uh, never. You never have too much of it, Dave. You're exactly right. Ready to kick this one away for the Golden Rams is Foley. Rahman's back to return for Kutztown. Only nine seconds remaining. You're going to try and think he's going to squib kick it. Mm, they don't want any chances of a return here. Play it safe. And it is it. a squib kick indeed. It's going to roll. Raheem's going to pick it up at about the 20, and he's going to be hit by a group of Golden Rams with 4.5 seconds remaining. Do you take a shot, or you just take a knee and one going to the half? Uh, just take a knee going into the half. You're down 27 points. You can't get 27 points back on one play, so right. why risk injuries? We've already seen about four credit style players go down mm -hmm. on the field here today. So take a knee, play it safe, you get the ball back at halftime. Westchester has been hitting on all cylinders today in the first half, picking up where they were last week in the second half against Lockhaven. Barney comes out, four wide receiver set. Williams on his right hip. Barton's going to decide he's going to roll in the pocket to the far side. He's going to take it himself and get out of bounds, and that will do it. Westchester leads 27 to nothing over Cutchdown at the half. You are watching this SFBN presentation of Westchester University football presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Me? Yes, you. Do you like pro sports? Yeah. You like college sports? Of course. You like high school sports? I guess. Maybe you just don't know much about them. Hey, voice in the sky. Huh? Where can I go to learn more about Philadelphia area high school athletics? Just watch Varsity Voice every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. on TCN. Hi, I'm Tommy Green, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. When I was in high school, it was very important to me to show scouts what I could do. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you're a small to medium sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAY-EASY.
Now it's time for the Pennsylvania Army National Guard Halftime Report. For more information about how to attend college full-time, tuition-free, and serve in the Army National Guard part-time, contact Master Sergeant Tyrone Mickens at 215-880-3409. Westchester leads at the half 27-0. I am alongside men's basketball coach Damian Blair. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, first expectation... There's only a month almost until game time. Yeah. What have you seen so far? Well, you know, we're, we're allowed eight hours a week of, uh, of conditioning, so we haven't seen much. We start this Thursday officially, but uh, we got five freshmen, so right now it's just a matter of trying to get them acclimated. Mm -hmm. Especially your returning players like Matt Wisely. What can you expect them to learn? Well, I'll tell you what, you, you, Matt does it all, so uh, they can learn a lot from Matt. Matt's unbelievable on the defensive end. Offensively, he's improved his game. Um, the, the range on his, on, on his three-point shot has gotten a lot better. He's gotten stronger, so hopefully they can take a page out of his book and do a little bit of everything to make us a better team. Absolutely. As West just trying to get more momentum, you're trying to get a lot more freshmen. You had a lot of freshmen last year, and you're trying to get a lot of combination and chemistry. Is that something we're going to have to look forward to in the first couple of games? Definitely. We, we, have, we have two freshmen that, that have been uh, doing a really good job up until this point, Matt Penical and, and Malik Jackson. And, and both of those guys, uh, you know, played at a very high level at high school. Uh, so they, they know what it takes to, to, to play in some, in some big games. So hopefully they'll be able to take those experiences from high school and, and, and uh, translate them into, into our, their college games. Other than Wisely, who should we look for going into the season? Well, it, it's, it's going to be interesting because right now we're, we're just trying to figure out Mm -hmm. Who's who's going to be able to fit into what spots? You know, Avery, right. Avery Brown's back, Ben Mingle though is back, mm -hmm. uh, but we have five freshmen that I think that are going to be able to contribute. Um, Jackson Highland, uh, uh, Jaleel Myers was it was a was a red shirt last year. He broke his leg, so hopefully he'll be able to give us some strong minutes. So to be honest with you, I don't know what we have yet. <laughs> Now, feels like Mingle though has been here forever. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> it does. Uh, it, it, you know, look, Ben has been in a lot of big games. He played in uh, three final, uh, three uh, big fours. Yeah, he played played in some big games at Carroll. Played in two conference championships. So, he, hopefully, he'll be a, a leader as well as Matt will throughout the course of the year. Absolutely. I mean, with all the players you got on your team, expect a fast paced style tempo that you normally go with well I mean that's what we've been doing for the last five or six years we had a lot of success doing that uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue to push the ball but you know they, they got a lot of new rule changes that we, we used to have a 35 second shot clock now we have a 30 second shot clock so we're gonna have to take the best available shot uh, and make sure that it's a good shot so yeah we'll, we'll continue to push the ball now how do you adjust to something like that do you practice it within your own practices when you have scrimmages or are you just trying to adjust like that? Well, it's all new to us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll, we'll be practicing with the shot clock mm -hmm. every day and, and, and hopefully the kids will get a good feel for, you know, how fast they have to take a shot. But we've been playing so fast over the last three or four years, I don't think it'll be much of a change. Well, what are your expectations going into the season with a bunch of new freshmen? you got a few returning seniors, but what can, what can the fans expect? we got to get better every day. And mm -hmm. when you have a young group, they don't understand the system. So right. uh, we're going to start on the defensive end, and hopefully our defense will convert into some offense. But, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're not looking at wins and losses. We're just looking at trying to become a better basketball team every single day. Absolutely. As you try to get better every single day, you're talking about the practices and a bunch of players. What kind of style can we expect? We've seen a lot of in the paint. You said up tile style. Up tempo style offense right. with all your players you're going to attack the paint or just trying to find the best possible shot the focus is going to be primarily on the defensive end okay. uh, over the last five years we've been a team that switched defenses almost on every possession so mm -hmm. we played a lot of uh, one two two pressure a lot of man-to-man -man pressure a lot of zone and we're going to continue to do that on the offensive end we used to run a, a three out two in and mm -hmm. now we're going to be doing a four out one in uh, with the loss of Corey Blake, we're going to have to have our perimeter players step up and, and, and score the ball more if, if we're going to be effective. Absolutely. It's going to be an exciting basketball season here with head coach Damian Blair as Westchester University's basketball team is going to be a look to action. First game against Gwena Mercy, correct? Yes, Gwena Mercy. It's going to be a very interesting season for the Golden Rams and a very exciting season for the Golden Rams Let's in Hollinger so. Fieldhouse. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> Thank you, Coach Blair, for joining us. Thank you. You're watching this presentation of halftime by the National Guard. You're watching this presented by the Service Solutions.
Hi, I'm Marty Bystrom, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. In my experience in Major League Baseball, I know how important it is for high school athletes to gain exposure. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the Sports Fan Base Network. If you are a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866 pay Blue Stein, Michael & Company, certified public accountants, believe that your bottom line is as important to them as it is to you. Why? Because they care about the things that you care about. Whereas most accountants can take your numbers and put them on financial statements and tax returns, Blue Stein and Michael work with you through the year to help you solve problems by providing sound professional advice. They enable you to make key business decisions, and they are with you throughout the entire year, not just tax time. Blue Stein and Michael are not just hired hands. They are part of your team, and they provide professional service when you need it most. Blue Stein and Michael specialize in accounting, tax, and consulting services for small businesses, primarily for the construction industry. If you're looking for yes men, hire someone else. But if you want sound advice from service oriented CPAs, then you'll want to call Blue Stein and Michael at 215 635 3200. That's Blue Stein and Michael at 215 635 3200. Funk's Mine Indoor Sports Center is the area's largest indoor sports and event center with over 78,000 square feet of playing and expo surface. We offer year-round programs for toddlers to teens as well as an extensive adult league program in a variety of sports. Celebrate your birthday with an unforgettable party. Choose from Nerf Turf Tag, Bubble Soccer, or a variety of activities for a party everyone will be talking about. Funk's Mine is the first and only facility in the area to offer bubble ball soccer. See if you have what it takes to beat the bubble. Visit our facility, conveniently located in Hatfield, PA. For the love of the game, it's Buxmon Indoor Sports Center. The Sports Fan Base Network, this area's leader in high school sports broadcasting, is continually bringing you the most in-depth coverage. Join us for Varsity Voice every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. on TCN, where we'll have interviews with players, coaches, writers, and more, plus analysis, highlights, and in-depth features on major topics in the Delaware Valley high school sports community. Tune in every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. on TCN for the best high school sports show around, Varsity Voice, presented by SFDN. The Sports Fan Base Network, this area's leader in high school sports broadcasting, is continually bringing you the most in-depth coverage. Join us for Varsity Voice every other Wednesday at 6 and 10.30 p.m. on TCN.
Welcome back to John A. Farrell Stadium on the campus of Westchester University. The Golden Rams lead 27-0 over the Kutztown Golden Bears. Should be an interesting second half. It's interesting second half, and we've seen throughout the course of the season Westchester be a one-half team, whether it be the first half or the second half. Most of the times it's the second half. This time they come out clicking in the first half and command pretty much every phase of the game, offense, special teams, and defense. But there's two halves to a football game, Dave. They need to keep up the pressure they're applying on the defensive end, keep up the momentum they have going on the offensive end, and not let Kutztown get back into this game. For the halftime report, Pat Moriarty is 18 of 25 for 268 and three touchdowns. He's four, thrown four touch, three touchdowns in four consecutive games. Tight end Tim Brown is reeled in seven for 85. For the Golden Bears, their quarterback is 5 of 12 for 73. Terry Williams, the running back, has six carries for a 57. To see if the Golden Bears can try and get back on track with this aerial attack. Well, we've seen it been so so good for them in previous games. It's so electric, but they've been stymied by Westchester's defense right now. And I'm going to contribute that to the defensive line of Westchester, getting pressure up in the face of Chad Barton, not letting him make these throws down the field. Absolutely. With the first half statistics, Westchester has 42 total plays or 307. Moriarty launching three touchdown passes. They've been clicking on all cylinders. For Chad Burton and the Golden Bears, he has been sacked twice. He's applied pressure by the Golden Rams, but it seems that short passing game might be the way to go. And the beginning of the game, Dave, we talked about how Kutztown's offense is so electric, but Westchester's pass defense has been coming up big for them in previous weeks. We were looking forward to that matchup, and right now Westchester is winning that matchup favorably on the defensive end. They need to keep that up in here in the second half. On the ground for the Golden Rams, Brandon Monk, the senior running back, has seven carries for 49 and a TD. He seems to be pairing healthy after having a few ankle problems early on. And that's what you need is get that running game established early, and that's exactly what they did. They got him involved early in the offense early, and he's able to come in and make big plays for this offense because Westchester's passing game is very much dependent on their running game. Once they get that running game established, it opens up a lot of things for this passing offense that allows Pat Moriarty a lot more time to have make decisions back there. Foley's back to kick this one for the Golden Rams to get this second half underway. Raheem is back to return for the Golden Bears. Kick is a high boomer. It's gonna go down to the eight yard line. It's going to be taken by number 21 of the Golden Bears, who's going to try and go to the outside but be tripped up. There's a little miscommunication there on the kick return as the up man fielded the kick. The back man wanted to run and get a running start for it, but wasn't able to get it. Good job by Wester Westchester getting down, stopping them before they get to the Kutztown 20-yard line. Marcus Kelly took that kick off. He's a senior. He's 5'9". Try to utilize his speed to the outside. Quarterback Chad Bur Barden's going to try and find his wide receivers in the second half coming out shotgun formation trips to the near side Williams on his right hip Barton gets the snap play action he's gonna be looking to go down the field and he is gonna be sacked that is Andrew Cohen who continues to be a monster on this defensive line. We saw him, he had his footprints all over this game in the first half and he comes out booming in the second half, picking up right where he left off. That passing rush that we talked about for Westchester, that came mainly from Andrew Cohen on the outside getting around the edge on, on these tackles and applying pressure. Great job, first play for Westchester's defense. That is Andrew Cohen's fifth sack of the season. Four wide receiver set. It's going to be a handoff to Williams, and he is going to be tripped up. And Ralph Reeds is fired up. As fired up as he needs to be for this game. He's coming out clicking, and he's coming up and stopping all these runs as he signals to the sideline, eat me. I'm eating. I'm eating on this defensive line right now. Third down and 13. No gain on the carry. Ball is spotted on the 10-yard line. Barton comes out. Three wide receiver set. Excuse me, four wide receiver set. There's going to be a flag thrown in the area of a false start. And we Nate saw Williams penalties hurt. Head referee today. It's going to be a false start. It's going to back up Kutztown. 
cannot be happy as going in the halftime, they had six penalties for 39 yards. Tack on another one. That's doubling Westchester. And we saw penalties hurt cuts down. It's not the amount of penalties, it's the time of penalties. Penalties are really costly in situations. Now they're backed up to their five-yard line with a third and long here to go. Four wide receiver set. Williams on his left hip. He's looking to his right. He's going to scramble to the outside. He's going to launch it down the field. It is going to be caught by Williams, but he's going to be short of the first down by about two or three yards. That's a good job by Westchester's defense. You'll take that. We're not looking for an interception or a knockdown pass every time he drops back to pass. Just keep him in front of you. Do not let him get past the sticks. Good job. It still forces a punt. That was Williams' fourth reception of the day. But fourth down and three. Dutch is going to have to punt this one. The Brandon Monk who stands on the 40-yard line. kick is a line drive one. It's going to let it bounce. It's going to take a hop back and forth. It's going to be spot on the 46. So good field position for the Golden Rams early in this third quarter. Let's see if Pat Moynier can come out picking up where he left off in that first half. Commanding the offense. That's the biggest thing for this sophomore quarterback is not only does he have to make good throws, but he's got to command this offense. Make his presence known as a leader on that offense. Interesting, as Westchester's wide receivers, everyone seems to be touching the ball. you got Tim Brown with seven receptions. Mayor, four in the touchdown. DiPietro getting some action in addition to Eddie Elliott. And everyone, Mayor sharing the wealth here. Everyone wants a piece of the action. Mm -hmm. Pistol formation, four wide receiver set. It's going to be a play action, and it's going to be a screen pass intended for Brandon Monk, incomplete. Kutztown sniffed that out that time. Moriarty does a good job. Don't try to force it if it's not there. Throw it incomplete. Let's not try to take a sack either. We'll go with second down to 10. Still in the game is number one, Connor Walsh, so he's going to be the center from now on. Moriarty, pistol formation, four wider... Three wide receiver set, Tim Brown, that's tight end. It's going to be a handoff to Brandon Monks. He's going to go to that right side, make a move. He's going to be tripped up at the 46. Setting up third down to manageable. Good job for, for Brandon Monk. We see great patience by this running back. He doesn't try to force a hole that's not there. Rides the hip of his offensive line, waits for the holes to open up, and as soon as he do, he hits some hard and cuts up field. Four wide receiver set, pistol formation. Third down and three. Westchester is in Kutztown territory. Snap is looking to his right. He completes it to senior Adam Dempsey. He picks up the first down, and he is going to be spotted on the 34-yard line. That middle of the field has been wide open, whether it's been Tim Brown in the middle of the field. We see DiPietro get some action in the middle of the field. And now we see Dempsey coming up for that quick slant in the first down. Good job by Pat Moriarty finding his open receivers. Westchester goes right up to the line of scrimmage. Shotgun formation is going to be a curl route. It's going to be intended for Eddie Elliott. It was unable to reel it in. A little bit high there for Moriarty. Looked like he rushed it through. Didn't look like it came out right out of his hands. And Elliott wasn't able to pull it down. Second down and 10. It's the second drop today by Eddie Elliott. The throw was a little high. I think Elliott was looking for it to be right at his chest. Nonetheless, it's a ball that he can reel in, so it's going to go down as a drop pass. Pistol formation. Dempsey down the bottom of your screen. It's going to be a handoff to Monk, who was just tripped up. Good job by the front line. That's... That's their middle linebacker who just saved a big game. That's Delp because he was off to the races. Monk had a lot of green in front of him. If he wasn't tripped up, he may have still been running in and taking it to the house. That's a good job by this defensive line of getting a hand on him, just tripping him up so he can't get loose. Pistol formation, three wide receiver set. Ball is dropped by Moriarty, and he is going to decide to look down the field. He's going to go off. He's going to run. He's going to dive. And it is going to be close to the sticks. We're used to seeing Moyarty make the first plays with his, with his arm. We're seeing Moyarty make a lot of plays with his feet today. That's not the first time that's been a broken play that he's had to scramble and either make a good throw or pick up some yardage with his feet on the ground. Good job by the quarterback. 
Good job by Moriarty, keeping that play alive. You see, in second time, Hurley was able to grab that first touchdown, and since then, Westchester's been on a roll. Seems like everything's going their way, Dave. Adam Dempsey goes in motion. It's going to be a fake to Dempsey. It's going to be a keeper. Moriarty showing off his wheels. He's like, hey, coach, I, I got some wheels too. Let me run the football a little bit. Good fake to Dempsey on a jet sweep. Gets it right up the middle. That's a good nine-yard gain on first down. Nine-yard carry for Moriarty. Ten minutes to go in the third quarter. Westchester knocking on the door up 27 to nothing. Pistol formation. Monk the deep back. They're going to put wide receiver in motion. There seemed to be confusion on the play as both players move. That's going to be a timeout. They're going to pick it up. They're going to call a timeout with Westchester. There was a flag on the far side of the field. The ref is picking it up. And it cuts down. Coach is asking for an explanation saying, hey, you threw the flag on the field. We need a reason for it. This S SFBM presentation of Westchester University football is provided by Payroll Service Solutions. Welcome back. Westchester comes out. It's going to be a handoff to Brandon Monk, and he is going to be swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. Delp and company on the tackle. And there it is, number 94. That's Big Zamir McDonald getting a push for that defensive line. Finally able to get some pressure in the backfield and stop Westchester's running game. But Westchester is still right outside the red zone, so they can still make something happen here. Third down and four to go. Moriarty pistol formation, four wide receivers. Mayer in the slot. He's looking that way. Decides to go look over the middle. He hound his target. That's going to be a touchdown for the Golden Rams. Coming down with it was number 80. Everyone's getting touches today. Tyler. Karpinski gets his first touchdown of this game. Moyarty really spreading the wealth here. Good job for the quarterback. Westchester goes up 33-0, maybe 34-0 after the extra point. Karpinski with the touchdown pending the extra point is Paulson. Snap is clean. Kick is up. Kick is good. Westchester leads 34-0. Sports Fan Base Network presentation of Westchester University football is provided by the Payroll Service Solutions. Welcome back to John A. Farrell Stadium. The Karpinski touchdown gives the Goal Rams a commanding 34 to nothing lead. And this is what we've been looking to see all year from Westchester. We know they can command offense with this well. We've just been looking forward to seeing it. Now we're finally seeing it against a good Kutztown Bears defense. So Moriarty, kudos to him. He's coming out gunslinging today. Foley's ready to kick this one away. 9-10 in the third quarter. It is a high kick. It's going to be returnable. It's going to be at the 10-yard line. He's going to bring it down the side. That's a move by Kelly. He's going to spin his way down to about the 28. So with nine minutes remaining, Barton's going to try and find some rhythm. Find some rhythm that he hasn't found all day. 
Let's give this Westchester defense all the credit in the world for not letting this Kutztown Bears high-flying offense get anything established, whether it's on the ground or through the air. Barton's had a world of trouble today. You have the credit defensive coordinator Mike Furlong because he's done a phenomenal job. And he knew that the way you, you, way you stop a high-powered offense is get pressure, and he's applied that pressure all game. Crowd is coming alive. Four wide receivers set for Barton. It's going to be a play action, and it is going to be caught by Williams over the middle of the field for a first down. He's going to be tackled down by Patton. No huddle. Go to the Golden Bears. They will go three wide receiver set. Scott is the running back on his left hip. They put a man in motion. It's going to be a jet sweep to the outside to Kelly. And he has running room. Raheem is going to step out of bounds. So he's going to pick up the first down. But he had more daylight. Was unable to stay in bounds. And that was a great block by the Golden Bear tight end. They're sealing the edge. The defensive end, Andrew Cohen, was coming around to try to make a play. And got hit by a brick wall. And that really sprung the running back there for the first down. Empty backfield for Barden. Five wide receiver set as they're getting the call from the sideline. Barnes looking to his right. He's going to throw over to Melda. It is complete. He breaks a tackle. He's going to go down. He's at the 10. He's going to be one man to beat. Patton saves a touchdown, but Reed, there's his name. That's who we've been looking for this whole game to get established. He finally gets a touch of the football, makes a great play happen. Now they're down inside Westchester's red zone. Let's see if Quinstock can finally put some points on the board here. Reed has been a monster this season. They're getting him the ball off that pattern. S Scott, the deep back, shotgun formation, four wide receiver set. Barney gets the snap. Andrew Cohen's applying the pressure. It is thrown, and it is complete. That's a touchdown. That's Cody Reed, and he has another touchdown this season. That's his seventh early in this season. Great job by Cody Reed to stay on his route. That's a great job also by Barton to see the pressure coming from Andrew Cohen, to realize that his receiver's open in the back of the end zone, just throw it up to where only his receiver can get it. Kutztown gets on the board finally here. Barton tosses his 15th pass of the season for the end zone. Rosenfeld's kick is up. The kick is good. Kutztown find the end zone with the Barden to read touchdown. Westchester still leads 34 to 7. This SFBM presentation of Westchester University football is provided by Payroll Service Solutions. Welcome back as the Golden Rams' Rammy is along the sideline. <laughs> Rammy's enjoying the day out here, enjoying the lead that his Rams have built here earlier to early in this game. But we saw Kutztown finally come down and have a very impressive drive there. Barton looked good in the pocket. They are able to find their main man, Reed, for some big plays and a score. And they get them a little bit closer in this game. But all Westchester needs is to come down and answer the score. And that style means anything that Kutztown just did. I have to admit, I like that, that Superman logo shirt for the breast cancer awareness pink. As Rosenfeld gets ready to kick this one away. Back to receive for the Golden Rams is Elder. He's going to take it. He's going to find a middle. He's going to find a crease. Cut back. And he's going to be stuffed at the 31-yard line. It's a good field position for the Golden Rams. As normal, they start with good field position. Their special team's kick return is something that they really hang their hat on. Elder and Monk really get out and give Moyarty a good chance to, to start this drive on a good note. 
Moriarty comes out once again. He's tossed four touchdown passes today. Eddie Elliott, wide receiver on the far side. Three wide receivers set. Elder will be the deep back. He's going to put Hurley in motion. And Moriarty is going to go deep down the field. He has a wide open wide receiver. He's going to go down to the 40-yard line. That's Karpitsky again. Catches his first touchdown of the game. Then finds a wide open up in the latter part of the seam. Good job for Moriarty. Finding holes all in this Bears defense. Everybody's getting involved today. That's what he should. But there had to be a breakdown in the secondary because Karpinski was wide open on that post route. Not a man within about five yards of Karpinski. Definitely a lapse in the defense. Shotgun formation. Three wide receivers set. They're going to put a man in motion. It's going to be a swing pass in that direction. And that's going to be Eddie Elliott who's going to weave his way down to the 15-16 yard line. And that's a case of we said how dangerous these backs are in space. You saw that breakaway speed that Elliott possesses. Once he hits that hole, he's off to the races. Not many people can catch him. Absolutely. As Westchester goes right back up. No huddle. Pistol formation. Three wide receiver set. It's going to be a snap. He's going to look to his right and throw it back to his left. He has another wide receiver touchdown in the corner of the end zone. And that's his second of the game. How about Karpitsky coming alive in this third quarter? Catches his first touchdown, makes a big play on the next possession, and then catches his second touchdown. Back-to-back -to -back touchdowns on back-to-back -to -back possessions for this young man. I have to admit, I am very impressed by the way Pat Moriarty is throwing the football. That's his fifth touchdown pass of the day. Doing what he wants, when he wants. And, and Pat Moriarty is really showing us something here for Westchester. It's a very good sign. Paulson in the attempt, the extra point. And it is good. Westchester leads 41-7. Moriarty's fifth touchdown pass, second to Karpinski. This presentation of Westchester University football is presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Hey you, who me? You like pro sports? Yeah. You like college sports? Of course. You like high school sports? I guess. Maybe you just don't know much about them. Where can I go to learn more about Philadelphia Area High School Athletics? Watch Varsity Voice every other Wednesday, 6 p.m. on TCN. Welcome back to John A. Farrell Stadium. Moriarty is lighting it up. Fifth touchdown pass of the day. And we were just talking about during the commercial break, this is not the turn that we expected this game to go. We thought it was going to be a low-scoring defensive battle, and it came out. Uh, it is a battle of Westchester's defense, but it is a complete domination by Westchester's offense. Into the game today, the Golden Bears averaged 36.6 points per game. They only have seven today. It's fully kicks off. And... It's going to go over Kelly's head. He's going to take it from the five, and he is going to be slammed down. And it was a phenomenal hit by number 20 of the Golden Rams. And that's tonight's All-American Sporting Goods hard hit of the game. For all your sports equipment and apparel, shop at All-American Sports Goods located at the corner of Cotman and Tabor in Northeast Philadelphia. For more information, call 215-342-6141. What a phenomenal hit by the Golden Rams. And we've seen Kutztown's kick return special teams be very shaky. That's the second time where the ball has come to the up man and he's not fielded it correctly. So they really got to fix. There's a lot of things going wrong here for Kutztown in this game. Barden comes out. Five wide receivers set. He's looking to his right. He's going to throw a curl route that is going to be complete. Complete. Patton comes in with the tackle, but not before Kelly was able to reel it in. That's going to be a six yard pickup with six minutes to go. Second down and four. 
That's going to be trips to the near side for Barton. Four wide receiver set. He's going to look to his right. He's going to launch it deep down the sidelines. Incomplete intended for Williams. We've seen that double move trying to be put off a couple times by Barton in this Kutztown offense and has yet to be completed once. They did get a pass interference call once on the far sideline, but still have yet to complete one of those passes for the double move. That's a great job here by the Westchester cornerbacks. They are testing sophomore from West Catholic, Shaquille James, who had a nice game last week. He's been a very nice up-and-comer. Third down and four for the Golden Bears. Here comes the pressure up the middle. Pressure up the middle that we've seen all game. Trips in the near side. He's going to throw it that way. It's going to be complete the read, who's going to be wrapped up but not before the first down. That's a good job by Barton. Recognizing the pressure that Westchester is bringing, realizes that he's got to get out of his hands quickly. Hits Reed right there in the middle for the slant. Moves to change for the first down. Kaiser out of Garnet Valley was able to wrap him up. Ball is spotted on the 28-yard line. Frips to the near side, two wide receivers on the far side. Empty backfield. Barnes looking that way. He's going to go up the gut. He's going to take in a run. He's going to be able to pick up the first down and run out of bounds. What a good job to look down the field. Good job by Barton, realizing that there's nowhere to go down the field, steps up in the pocket, then takes off, gets the first down with his legs. We said he could make things happen with his legs. He's showing it. Raheem checking in in the game for the Kutztown. It's going to be a three wide receiver set. Scott on Barton's right hip. He's going to put Raheem in motion for that jet sweep. It is going to go to him on the outside. He gets a block. He's down the sidelines, picks up the first down, and it's going to be about 11-yard gain. That we see Kutztown's offense getting into a little bit of rhythm that they couldn't get into in the first half. I don't know if it's Westchester's defense resting back on their laurels a little bit because they know they have such a big lead, or maybe Kutztown's just finding some holes, but Kutztown looks like their offense is starting to get going here. Ball is spotted on the 44-yard line, so they're in Westchester territory. Trips to the near side. Four wide receiver set for Barton. Williams, the running back. He's going to look to the right. He's going to try and launch it down the field. He has an intended target for Williams, who was unable to reel it in down the field. Good look, though. He had a... He had a step on his defender. If he's able to grab that, that's a touchdown. Just couldn't quite reel it in, though. Good route running. Good throw by Barton. Just couldn't get complete the pass. That would have been six if he was able to bring it in. Second down and ten with about four minutes to go in this third quarter. Westchester leads 41-7. to seven. Trips to the near side for Barton. Gets the snap. He's looking to his left. He's going to roll out to the left side, and he is going to be taken down. Great job by number 93 of the defense to come down with that. Way to get chase him down. Barton looked like he was going to try to take off and use something with his legs there, but got chased down by the Westchester defensive lineman. Good job. Now sets up third and long. Third and long for the Golden Bears as everybody is starting to weave their way in as Westchester seems to be making substitutions. Third down and nine. Ship was the one that came down with that tackle. Barton's going to look over the middle and it is going to be incomplete. Good coverage by Reeves, who's been an animal all over the field today. And that's a great job by Westchester to dig their heels into the ground, not let Kutztown drive down the field. They're starting to get a little bit of momentum on this drive. Now they force a punt and put the ball back into the hands of their offense. Fourth down and nine. They're going to punt this one away. Back to return for the Rams is Brandon Monk on the 10. It's a clean snap. Dutch's kick is going to be a high. It's going to take a bounce. It's going to roll backwards. And they're going to spot it down on the 14-yard line. So Moriarty is going to come out. 
one more time in this third quarter. And you'd have to think that if they put some points on the board, even if they don't put some points on the board, this baby me Moriarty's last drive as he served his duties well today. Good job by the sophomore quarterback. What an impressive day he's had. Absolutely. Everybody's been contributing. You have Karpinski, the tight end. Tim Brown's day seems to be done. But additionally, you expect to see maybe more Darrell Elder try and get his legs in this one. More Elder, maybe get A.J. DiPietro Di Di into this game uh, to get, you know, some reps. Maybe get some second stringers in there, see what they can do as the first stringers have served their jobs well today. It's going to be three wide receivers. Mariardi's looking to the right. It's going to be a screen pass intended for Adam Dempsey. He was going to weave his way for a six-yard gain. The senior out of Cardinal O'Hara. Yeah, and he's already put his fingerprints in this game, too. Has had a couple receptions, made some big plays, able to get a nice seven-yard gain there on first down. Moriarty's going to be in the pistol. Three wide receiver set. Second down and three for the Golden Rams. It's going to be a handoff to Brandon Monk, who's going to find a running room, but he's going to be taken down after five yards, but not before the first down. I love to see Monk's vision. If there's a hole, if there's not a hole where he's intending to run, he doesn't just try to force it. He has great patience, waits behind his blockers, waits for a crease to open up, hits it hard, and he's a great north-south runner. He's not going to do a lot of dancing back there in the backfield. He's going to get some yards for you. Checking into the game is the All-American Tim Brown. Checking out is Eddie Elliott. It's going to be a handoff to Monk to the outside. He's going to fight off defenders and be spotted down at the 34-yard line. So a seven-yard carry off tackle. And this is the type, the, the point of the game where now you're just trying to eat up chunks of yards and eat up chunks of clock. You don't need to score quickly. You're up 41-7. to seven. Now this is time. Let's try to wind down this game. Let's take the life out of the Bears now by taking the life out of the football and just running it down the throat. And also, if you can set up that run, it leaves that play-action pass over the top. And that's deadly. Well, you already pistol formation, three wide receiver set. It's going to be another handoff to Monk who's going to dance at the goal line, excuse me, at the line of scrimmage, and he's going to pick up no yards. It's going to be third down and three. He's got jump in his feet a little bit. It's a little bouncy. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find a, a lane there in the backfield. Couldn't find one, so just sticks his nose in the pile. Tries to get what he can, but virtually no gain. One minute remains in this third quarter. Dempsey, the wide receiver at the bottom of your screen. Going across the field. Moyardi is going to throw in that direction. Adam Dempsey has a great catch and he's going to be down at the 48 yard line. What a job coming across the field on one hand in that. These receivers that's the second one handed catch we've seen coming across the middle of the field from these Westchester receivers. They're showing up for the quarterback today. This is what I love to see. Also something I've noticed Dave there's not probably not one person on this Westchester offense whose name we haven't called today. Mm -hmm. It's really by committee. Everybody coming up. It was all hands on deck today and they're really getting the job done. Most likely the last play of this quarter. Moriarty comes out. Five wide receiver set. Young checks in. He's the wide receiver number seven. They're going to put him in motion. That's going to be a fake jet sweep. Moriarty's going to be tripped up in the backfield and lose the ball. Westchester recovers. That's a great job. They come back with the ball. And that will do it here in the third quarter. Westchester leads 41-7. This presentation of Westchester University football is presented by the Payroll Service Solutions. Hi, I'm Marty Bystrom, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. In my experience in Major League Baseball, I know how important it is for high school athletes to gain exposure. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you are a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. Welcome back for this fourth quarter. 
Pat Moriarty, the sophomore, has tossed five touchdowns today, hitting all of his targets. The only one he's hit twice was the tight end Karpinski. We've seen a pattern rolling out through this game today, Dave. It's been all Westchester in every phase of the game, offense, defense, special teams. They're really commanding this Kutztown Bears uh, team, and they really have gotten no rhythm going. They can't stop Westchester on offense. They can't do anything against Westchester's defense. Uh, the Kutztown Bears look completely puzzled by Westchester today. Just as good as Moriarty already has been the defense has been phenomenal getting sacks at timely times and the secondary is shut down two premier wide receivers two premier wide receivers and a huge passing attack that coming in today we thought we we're going to do some damage three wide receivers said they put young in motion that ball was thrown it's going to roll out of bounds we'll see if they say that was a backwards pass or not they're going to call that a lateral and they're going to move them more i don't think Anyone on the field realized that that ball was still live as they hit the turf because Moyarty threw it behind him. No one realized that they kind of gave up on the play. Who knows? Kutztown could have picked that ball up if they realized it. Absolutely. Just in case you always want to pick up the ball. Never know. It's going to be a five yard lock. It's going to be third down and 20. Moyarty's going to be in the pistol. They're going to put Dempsey in motion. Moriarty's going to throw that way. He's going to complete it to Dempsey. He's going to cut back. He's going to roll all the way down to the 45-yard line. Gain of nine, but not enough as they're going to bring out Paulson to kick this one away. Great move by Dempsey in the open field, getting the yards back that they missed, getting it almost to the initial line of scrimmage, making it a little bit easier for this Westchester team to pin Kutztown back deep in their own territory. On today, Pat Moriarty is 25 of 34 for 386 and five touchdowns with no interceptions. What an electric day for that sophomore quarterback. That's got to be a huge confidence booster as if he keeps this up, Westchester will be on to their fourth straight victory. Paulson is blocked. The punt is blocked, and they're rolling, and it is going to be a recovery and a touchdown by Kutztown. So this is one phase of the game that Kutztown was really struggling in was their special teams. And they get a huge boost from their special teams right now, getting a blocked punt scooped up for a score. Great job by number 13, Craig Reynolds, to get that touchdown for the Golden Bears. There were about three Golden Bears that came in mm -hmm. on that punt virtually untouched. No one, no one got them there. We'll get to the punter, get their hands up, and cleanly block the punt without touching the punter. That's the key that you got to look for on block punts is you can block the ball, but you still cannot run into the punter. Good job by Kutztown. Rosenfeld in the attempt, the extra point. Clean snap. Kick is up. Kick is good. Kutztown puts their 14th point on the board. Marple New. Excuse me, Westchester leads 41-14 as it seems like Golden Bears are not finished. They're not done. This is a great sign for Kutztown. They may not be able to get all the way back into this game, but you never want to see your football team quit. You want to see them keep fighting, keep trying to get back into this game. But now it's important that Westchester responds. Okay? Kutztown has come out in the second half and scored two touchdowns. You can't let them have any life. You can't let them try to pull up an upset. Or, I'm sorry, you cannot let them try to pull up a comeback. you got to score, stop me them, stop me any momentum that they have. Don't let the score deceive. The special teams have not played well today for the Golden Rams. They had a missed chip shot, a missed extra point, and now a punt block for a touchdown. Which is weird because special teams last week was such a big part of their victory as they had the punt return for a touchdown and just overall solid play. Back to return this for the Golden Rams is Elder and Monk as Rosenfeld will get set to kick this one away. Leading the Golden Rams in tackles today is their linebacker Ralph Rees with nine. Also, Andrew Cohen has two and a half tackles for loss. Leading the team in receptions is Tim Brown, 7 for 85, as Kellen Williams for the Golden Bears is 5 for 66. Rosenfeld's kick is up. It's going to be returnable by Monk, who takes it from the 20. He's going to make a move, and he's going to be wrapped up and down at the 26-yard line.
I'm very interested to see if Moriarty comes out once again. And he looks like he's in the huddle getting ready to come on the field. If that pump block didn't happen, we may have be seeing the backup quarterback, but I think they don't want to take any chances. They want to get down and pretty much close this game out. And the best way to do that is to let Port Moriarty come out on a roll he's been coming out on. Ball is spotted on the 26-yard line with 13-19 on the clock for Moriarty and this Golden Rams offense. It's going to be a handoff to Elder off the right side. He's going to bounce it to the outside, and he's going to weave his way to the 33. So about a nice seven-yard carry for the sophomore. We haven't seen Elder have many carries in this game, but he gets a carry right there, gets a nice seven-yard gain, and we're going to look to move the chains here for Westchester as on a second and short. Scores from around the league. Shippensburg is up 44 to 21 over Lockhaven in the fourth quarter. Second down and three to go. Moriarty comes out shotgun formation. Three wide receiver set with Elder on his left hip. They're going to put a play. It's going to be a fake jet sweep. Moriarty will keep it. He's going to pick up no yards. It's going to be third down and three, but... You have to think, that's not what you want to see in the fourth quarter when you're up big. It was looks like a little bit of a read option there uh, by Westchester, seeing if they can get the Bears' defense on their heels, but they played it right. They saw the jet sweep coming. Moyarty looked at the defensive end, Zemir McDonald, see him not bite on the fake, so Moyarty keeps it, but able to get nothing. Now it's third and short. They need to complete this a pivotal third down. Third down and three, pistol formation, three wide receivers. Elder to deep back. Moriarty is going to throw in the direction of Tim Brown. He was going to run his way down to the 47-yard line. He has been phenomenal. He's been such a big target and a big help for Moriarty today. Seems to be just controlling the middle of the field. The middle of the field is always open for Tim Brown. Eighth reception of the day for the tight end. He is back to regular season form. He's ready to rock and roll. And you said, Dave, you're saying that Tim Brown looks NFL ready right now. I might have to agree with you with the day he's having today. Pistol formation. Eddie Elliott, the wide receiver on the near side. It's going to be a handoff to Elder. He's just going to go off tackle. He's going to pick up the first down. It's going to be... Uh, for the, that's going to be about a 13-yard carry for the sophomore. Great explosion by Elder to hit that hole hard. It's obvious this Kutztown Bears defense is tired. They're spent. They've been run on and passed on all day, and that wears on you, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally, and you can see it. It looks all the hands are on the hips, are on the knees, they're dragging, and Elder's coming in with fresh legs. Absolutely. It's a very good problem to have when you have a lot of running backs to work with. Pistol formation. It's going to be a fake and a jump pass. It's going to be complete to his tight end. 82 of the Golden Rams. A little bit of an unorthodox throw there by Moriarty, but when you got a big body like there, just throw it to your, to your mans where he can catch it. Nice throw by Moriarty. Second down and five with 10.30 to go in this fourth quarter. Moriarty comes out, shotgun formation, three wide receiver set. Hurley, the far wide receiver. He's going to put Eddie Elliott in motion. It's going to be a jet sweep to Eddie Elliott on the outside. He's going to reverse field. He's almost going to get a block. He almost ran free, almost saw the end zone, but he's going to pick up the first down. And what I love to see by Moriarty is Moriarty still <laughs> involved in the play. <laughs> Dude, young, young. I don't think Coach Schwann's too happy, though, when you see your quarterback going to block a defensive end. You don't, you don't like to see that, but, hey, Moriarty's still involved in the play. If Young switches field, Moriarty's saying, hey, I'm not just going to be in the way. I'm going to go try to spring a block for him. Got to be careful, though. That's how sometimes quarterbacks get hurt. Eddie Elliott does have three running touchdowns on the season. He saw his fourth, came close to it. First down and 10 on the 28. Pistol formation. It's going to be a handoff to Elder off the left side. He's going to bounce it back right, but he's only going to find two yards. 
Delp has been all over the field. He has been. He seems to be the only one on this Bears defense who's still all over the field. As I said earlier, they look so tired and so spent, and that's how one of the biggest reasons Westchester is able to go down the field at will on them. It's great to see you want to put these types of drives together. Take time off the clock in addition to finding the end zone. Moriarty, shotgun. Three wide receiver set. And it's going to be a flag. Head official, Nate Williams. And Coach Down's going to take a timeout. We're going to step aside this presentation of Westchester University football is presented by Payroll Service Solutions. Blue Stein, Michael and Company, certified public accountants, believe that your bottom line is as important to them as it is to you. Why? Because they care about the things that you care about. Whereas most accountants can take your numbers and put them on financial statements and tax returns, Blue Stein and Michael work with you through the year to help you solve problems by providing sound professional advice. They enable you to make key business decisions, and they are with you throughout the entire year, not just tax time. Blue Stein and Michael are not just hired hands. They are part of your team, and they provide professional service when you need it most. Blue Stein and Michael specialize in accounting, tax, and consulting services for small businesses, primarily for the construction industry. If you're looking for yes men, hire someone else. But if you want sound advice from service-oriented CPAs, then you'll want to call Blue Stein and Michael at 215-635-3200. That's Blue Stein and Michael at 215-635-3200. Complete pass is complete over the middle for Moriarty. That's Di Pietro, and he is gonna find a first down and goal over the middle. Over the middle. How many times have we said that today, Dave? Over the middle. Pass completed over the middle. That's something that cuts down May in further games in games. You know, down the road next week, week after, they gotta tighten that defense up, that secondary, because Moriarty is really exposing that secondary, finding a lot of holes in that defense. Moriarty's looking for the end zone. First and goal from the five with eight minutes remaining. It's going to be a low snap. The handoff is going to go up the gut. And it's going to be Elder handoff. They're going to mark him down on the inch line. That's not quite the punch, not quite able to punch it in the end zone there. But you have two more downs to work with as they'll be able to get it in here for the score. Checking into the game for the Golden Rams it is number 25. That's Mike Class. Moriarty puts a running back in motion. That was Elder going to go with the jet sweep to the outside, but it appears that a player moved too early. Williams call. It is a false start on the Golden Rams, and that will back him up. Mm, probably he's not as costly right now in the game as Westchester has this commanding 41 to 14 lead but you still want to minimize mistakes like that mental errors come on you know the snap count you're an offensive lineman can't be jumping early especially when you're knocking on the door of a score might give Moriarty an excuse to throw one in again hey, he's looking for it I know he wants <laughs> that fifth touchdown absolutely as he has been lighting it up today Tossing five touchdowns puts his total to 18 in the air and only six INTs. Moriarty in the pistol. He's looking, he's looking. He's going to throw it away. He's going to throw it in the back of the end zone onto the track. When he had Di Pietri on this left side in the front pylon, throwing his hands up, looking over the sideline like I was wide open. Moriarty not able to go through his full progression, didn't see him open in the end zone. Third down and goal from the six-yard line. 6.50 remaining in the fourth quarter. Westchester has been scoring at will today. Five touchdowns through the air in addition to a Brandon Monk punch in. Moriarty, shotgun formation. Elder on his left hip. He's looking to his left. 
He's going to throw it. It's going to be the batted down and caught by Moriarty. And he's going to be down at the five. <laughs> wow, what a play. <laughs> Moriarty, great heads up play. Ball laid it right back in his lap. Hey, you catch it, take it off. We saw that earlier in the first quarter. Their first touchdown happened that way. A ball batted up in the air, caught and ran in for the score. It happens sometimes. Hur Hurley, the beginning of the game, catches a batted ball. Runs at 62 yards. That's how Westchester scored the first touchdown. And now Moriarty gets his own deflection as Paulson's in for the extra. It's going to be about a 23-yard field goal attempt. And that would have been some luck if Moriarty would have caught the ball and been able to ran it in. Moriarty's. And Paulson's kick is good. That will match his season long. Westchester leads 43-14. to 14. This presentation of Westchester University football is presented by Payroll Service Solutions. The Sports Fan Base Network, this area's leader in high school sports broadcasting, is continually bringing you the most in-depth coverage. Join us for Varsity Voice every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. on TCN, where we'll have interviews with players, coaches, writers, and more, plus analysis, highlights, and in-depth features on major topics in the Delaware Valley high school sports community. Tune in every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. on TCN for the best high school sports show around, Varsity Voice, presented by SFBN. The Paulson kick puts the score 44-14. Golden Rams in commanding lead, but Moriarty has been all over the field. Moriarty's doing it all right now. Wasn't able to get the touchdown on that last position, but he's already got five under his belt today for the, for the Westchester offense. So he's done more than his fair shares. They're up 44-14 to 14 with six minutes to go in this game. But it has been a great crowd here at John A. Farrell Stadium with only six minutes remaining. In the kick this one away is Foley. It's been a very interesting game as Westchester has been heading on all cylinders. And Foley gets the signal. And it's going to be a squibber. It's going to bounce. It's going to be picked up at the 15-yard line by Raheem. And he's going to run into a wall and be down at the 30. There's just no life from this Kutztown Bears team. If you take a look over at the sideline there, Dave, heads are down. They're slouching. Half their team is sitting down. Look like they're trying to figure out what Raheem they're doing tonight. He seems to be limping yeah, as he goes to the sideline. It's just, it doesn't look good. I think they realize that this game is a little bit out of their reach. But if you're Westchester, you cannot let that impact you on defense. You still want to try and get after them and try and secure this game. And I think that's why we saw Bill Zwan so animated on the sideline telling his team, hey, game's not over. Don't let them back in this game. Don't just give up. Barden, four wide receiver set. Scott on his left hip. He's going to be looking to the left. He's going to come back to his right and throw over the middle. Pass was deflected, intended for Reed. Good job by the defensive line getting their hands up and batting that one down. Well, we've seen three balls batted on the defensive side for Kutztown, so Westchester may try to adopt that principle. If you cannot get to the quarterback, get your hands up. You can intercept the ball or at least get in the way of the ball of its path. Empty backfield for Barton. Five wide receivers going to dump it down to Kelly. And he's picking up the first down. Seems like they're content on just allowing him to get these five, six-yard curl routes. Well, they, they Westchester is adopting the principle of let's take up clock. So if Kutztown wants to move the ball down the field in small chunks, that's okay because the clock is on Westchester's side. First down and 10 from the 40-yard line. Barden's looking to his right. He goes in that direction, and it is incomplete as they continue to try and work the middle of the field. Second down and 10 with 5.18 on the clock. Barden's going to come out. Four wide receiver set. Scott's going to be on his left hip. 
And it's going to go to Scott. And he's going to be down at the 44 or 40 yard carry. So you put it down the third and six. Most likely try and pick it up either through those, those slant patterns or try and get another curl. Westchester's content, nothing over the top. Nothing, just don't get beat long. That's mm -hmm. the that's what they're they're focusing on right now. If they move the chains on this drive, fine. Just don't let up a score. Don't let anyone behind you. Barnes gonna throw in that direction. Intended for Kelly. Nearly intercepted as Patton was off the deflection. And that's gonna set up fourth and medium range and looks like they're bringing out the punt unit. Barton looks less than pleased about coming off the field. He thought it was four down territory. He thought he was going to stay on the field and try to pick up the first down on fourth. But no, here comes the punt unit. It's going to go back in Westchester's hands. Probably to end this game. Fourth down and six. Brandon Monk back to receive. He's standing on the 20 yard line. Appears to be some confusion on the field, though, as the kick is up by Dutch, and he's going to be able to get it from the 20-yard line. Brandon Monk escapes one tackle. He's going to cut back. He's still freeze down the sidelines. There's a flag thrown at the 40. He's going down the sidelines. Monk is tripped up. He's going to be tackled at the 12, but there is a flag back where Monk broke free. Monk. Broke about three tackles in rapid succession. Switched field about three times and then found the crease and turned it upfield. Great job by Brandon Monk, but this may be coming back. Head official, Nate. Nate Williams is waving them back as there was a hold on the Golden Rams. So Brandon Monk, you got a 46-yard touchdown, uh, a 96-yard touchdown. Kick return last week. Almost broke that one. They're going to spot the ball on the Westchesters. They're going to move them all the way back. This is a big penalty. Big penalty. Costly penalty for Westchester. Luckily, they have this huge lead built up. But penalties hurt you in, in any time, in any facet of the game. As here we see the second string quarterback come. I mean, Pat Moriarty's day is done. First down and 10 for the Golden Rams. Ball is spotted on the 24-yard line. Warner comes into the game saying his first action is going to be a handoff to Young, who's going to scamper at the 30s down the sidelines, cuts back, and he's going to be spotted on the 49. What a move by Young. Westchester has a plethora of running backs. Plethora of running backs, and they're all dangerous in open space, all very elusive backs with great vision and great speed. Good job there by Young to get out in space and pick up the first down. Warner, the sophomore, he went to Bishop McDevitt. Big carry by Young, the transfer from the D1 AA score, uh, school. Excuse me. It's going to go to Young once again off the left side. He's still on his feet. He's at the 40. He's going to be taken down at the 29. Young is finding running room up behind this left side, and that's Gilbert paving the way. And you would think that he's the first string running back by how, how he come out firing and hitting these holes hard. Two very impressive runs by Young. Young is doing a good job. Mike Class decides to come in this one now to give Young a breather. Pistol formation. Four water. Three minutes remaining. Warner gets the snap. It's going to be a handoff to class up the middle. He, he's going to fight his way to the 25 yard line. It's pick up a four. He, mean, he tends to be more of a power back for the Golden Rams. And that's probably the only power back they have in their arsenal of running backs. They have Monk. Elder and Young were all three very elusive speedy backs on the outside. And then you have Glass, who's that smash mouth runner who go up the middle and get those tough yards that you need. Pistol formation for Warner. Offensive line deserves credit today for the clean pocket and running lanes for these running backs. It's going to go to Glass, this time off right side. He's going to pick up the first down. Good job as two minutes is creeping up
Ball is spied on the 17-yard line. Westchester seems content on this trying to get some running lanes and find the end zone. Wind that clock down. Winding the clock down, take up chunks of time and chunks in yards. Put a man in motion. It's going to be a jet sweep. And they're going to be hit in the backfield. It's going to be a two-yard loss. Seems to be some miscommunication as Warner wanted to hand the ball off to the wide receiver going in motion, but it didn't seem like they were ready. Well, it looked like that was the second time we've seen that little read option play by Westchester, and that's the second time we've seen it not work. Second down and 13. Uh, Warner in the pistol. Three wide receiver set. Young is back. And they're going to hand it to Young. He's going to bounce to the outside. Cut back. And he's going to be down after a gain of about six. Good job by the offensive line. They know they're going to run the ball, but they continue to drive their legs and pick up yards. Very aggressive from this offensive line. They've been doing a great job all day. They deserve all the credit in the world. Clock is winding down. This will be the last play of the game. Warner's 10 seconds remaining on the clock. He's going to hand it to Young, who's going to be stopped in the backfield. It's going to be a loss, but that will do it here at John A. Farrell Stadium, Westchester defeats the Golden Bears 44-14. Westchester's on a four-game winning streak. And James, I know, you know, I think everyone at home knows the player of the game today, Pat Moriarty. And well-deserved. Pat Moriarty came out and showed why he's the leader of this offense. Five touchdowns in the game, virtually no mistakes, did not throw an interception, hooked up on several times to his All-American tight end, Tim Brown. Pat Moriarty had a heck of a game today here, Dave. The nice Lloyd Sixman Sporting Goods player of the game is none other than Pat Moriarty, tossing five touchdowns and over 300 yards passing. And that's the nice player of the game presented by Lloyd Sixman's Sporting Goods, the leading supplier of the Philadelphia Air Public League. Visit them today at 7554 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair for all your sporting good needs. But Westchester, phenomenal job all the way around. They were able to find the end zone on occasion. Five touchdown passes by Moriarty. But none other. That defense, very well done by Coach Furlong. Well, you see, Kutztown has a very aerial assault oriented offense. A very quick strike offense that's very dangerous, can score a lot of points, and they were stymied today by Westchester's defense. At the beginning of the game we talked about that matchup of how Westchester's secondary was going to be tested a lot today by how Barton can get out, stretch the play with his legs, and find his receivers down the field. They did not let him do that. There was great coverage all the way down the field, and they were also going to get great pass for us, led by their uh, defensive end. Defensive end Andrew Cohen had two and a half tackles for loss. In addition, punching one in was Brandon Monk. So all uh, effort, special teams in all, by the Golden Rams to try and find their fourth win of the season. And they get it today. They got it. Fourth win of the season and fourth in a row. That's a lot of momentum that they need to keep carrying, keep going on uh, as, as the season progresses. That's what exactly what they look forward to. Great job all the way around by the Golden Rams. And we're going to step aside. You're, we're going to wrap it up here. And final thoughts, James? Final thoughts is what a great and impressive victory. Couldn't come at a better time right now. Westchester is really rolling. Uh, fourth victory, fourth convincing victory in a row. Comes here on, on Pink Day, Breast Cancer Day. Great Absolutely. atmosphere, as you see with the fans. I'm loving Westchester football right now, Dave. Great job all the way around Westchester is on a game, winning streak. They have completely taken down the PSAC, and it's going to be very exciting to see what they have in store for it. From the Sports Fan Base Network, this presentation of Westchester University football is presided by the Payroll Service Solutions. From everyone here, from the crew, thank you for listening to the Sports Fan Base Network.